<clears throat> Showtime. People deluded, I'm back again. Thank you very much for tuning back in each and every time. Good morning to those of you in the UK. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and even in some cases, good night, depending on where you are in this world. I hope you're doing well and safe. You know, it's Tuesday. I hope you've all had a great start to the week yesterday. I hope you're all moving that much closer to your goals, dreams, hopes, and aspirations. I hope you're all crushing your weekly targets, moving closer to your monthly targets. And a year from now, you can look back in whatever you're in you know with a sense of accomplishment so i hope you're well and safe obviously we're going to get into this you know this sort of arsenal transfer news and things like that you know could odegaard be returning to the club couldn't he obviously we'll get into that there's a couple of other talking points please make sure you're hitting the like button and you're checking the pin message out early doors and you're hitting the you know you're hitting the sub button on my youtube but also my twitch one love to everyone who so far has taken in deluded the deluded podcast you know on spotify apple when i up Uploaded it onto YouTube. One love to everybody who was out there on, on my live streams yesterday. Go and check them out if you haven't done such. And most importantly, get comfortable, get set, get your opinions in and all of those sort of things. Because I keep saying it, you lot make this for what it is, people, really and truly. Without you guys, there's no point sitting here and speaking about anything. And as I said, I watch a lot of YouTube. I see a lot of other YouTube channels and that. I'm going to be real. It's a bunch of the channels bullshit. You know, the fans and the people, them and the subscribers and the engagement, they don't offer no value. So I'm happy that with my 38 touching soon, 39 plus thousand, by God's grace, 40 before the end of the year, 50 before the end of next season. You know, I've got, you, you, it's amazing to sit here and speak to you. You know, we rarely agree like anyone in life, but you know, a lot of you, we don't, you know, we don't do the trolling thing. We have a laugh and a joke. Everybody's calculated in what they're saying. I learn a lot. In fact, there was a comment yesterday from Jay and he said something along the lines of, he articulated very well what I like to say in that we argue about the players. We very rarely argue about the position and what that could mean is centre mid. We'll probably argue about, you know, is it right to bring the conger in or not? But we all know we need a midfielder. So this is what I mean. I take a lot of things from you guys and it's always some, and always a lesson learned. So I'm thankful that you lot say thought-provoking things. You think for yourselves, you know, you're not talking nonsense. You know, I wouldn't want to be here every day. I literally look forward to 11.30. I know I was three minutes, four minutes late, people. And half the time it is my fault. This is one of the rare times um, you're treating me like Bellerin and Xhaka. If we lose, it's not my fault. Imagine, well, you can't see, but I don't know why. Again, my similar to you lot, my, my Samsung monitor that I used to obviously share the screen with you lot decided to go walk about and I don't know what it was. Maybe it had a fag break or something, but it weren't turning off, uh, turning on. Thankfully, it did because... I'm not trying to buy another one. So, yeah, just before we get into everything, you know, I like to welcome you lot in. As I said, good morning and, and appropriate greetings according to the day, wherever you lot are. Shout out to the uh, Arsenal fans and just football fans in general that are not in the UK. I appreciate it. CS, I appreciate it, man. Morning, DG, out on the jogging trail, 6.30 a.m. Atlanta, Georgia, America. And that's become a running theme. I always look for your username and sometimes I see you and you're not running. I think, are you taking a day off? It's all right. But love for tuning in. Wavely, I appreciate you lot. Um, Lacor is our best striker in terms of re reliability, is he? Is he? He scored in all big games that Oba either missed or got disciplined for. I mean, Aubameyang got disciplined for one game and he had he, he had malaria, let's be fair. And, you know, Aubameyang's also scored against City. He scored against United. I'm sure he's got a goal against Liverpool. I'm sure he's done it against Chelsea as well. Let's, let's be a bit fair. I do agree to you. He brings a lot to our team. That's why I... If you're going to get 15 million, you might as well just let him run down the deal because, you know, the other young Gs are, 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 are developing and things. I think he's got a lot of strengths. But in terms of re reliability, I don't think any of these strikers are. Typically, it's a Bamian based on last season. Well, the season before last, but based on last season, it's not. over For, for me, 38 games. Can I get 36 quality games from you? I can't. I can only say that about the select few. And I don't think either striker would be what I call reliable. I mean, Abamia can get back to it, but we'll have to see. As my man, Mr. Adlib23 said, slap the like button on entry, people. Please, appreciative. Please and thanks in advance. Shout out the Twitch gang as well. You know you lot are my favourites, low-key. Sorry, YouTube. I love you lot, but I love the Twitch gang because they don't troll. They listen. You know, they support the thing. So, yeah, man, I've got a lot of time for you guys, people. What are you lot saying before we crack on? Let me actually make sure I've got everything up, up, up here. Cool, cool, cool. Don't know why there's two extra tabs, but 
is what it is. People, people, deluded. You lot make me so conscious of that word, word, sorry. Hope you're well, DG and DG Nation. On behalf of everybody listening, right back at you and yours, my man. Very angry, man. I hope you're happy to be locked in. Omar and Jay, I see you. Chris has said, slap the like button, early doors. H has said, good morning, my guy. Good morning, right back at you and you and yours. Day off, you know. T save me for work, my guy. Go and enjoy your day off and just save me for when you're back in the office or whatever and I can feel some time for you, man. Go and enjoy your day, my guy. Liked on YouTube, back to Twitch, PMAV, PR. Big up. I don't know what a zoot is, but big up you for that, John. You know, big up you for that. All the credit in the bank Aubameyang built up is gone off of one bad season. Bare people are writing him off, but I can't rest on past laurels. Same way you've got to bring more to the you've got to bring more to the table. DG Laka has the highest conversion rate in in the league. I, I don't know what ITL means. From the past two seasons, out of all people, we've had fifty shots. I hear that, but bro, man's a striker. As he scored goals. It's just like when we had the conversation with Aubameyang and Laka. Oh, Laka is a, is the better striker because he's had less shots and scored more goals. But Aubameyang's taken more shots and scored more goals. You know, it's credit in the bank. You know, if, again, who is going to be the better plumber, the one that's or the better heart surgeon, the one that's worked on ten hearts, uh, or the one that's just done bare theory and worked on five hearts? I'm not trying to say Laka or Aubameyang because I love them both, but highest conversion rate, if it doesn't correlate to being one of the highest goal scorers, it's irrelevant really. And I love Lack, is it? But if you're not scoring, it don't really mean nothing. You can have as much shots to on target ratio as you want. Goals win game, strikers have a score. The Twitch and YouTube titles are different, DG. That is a shame because it shouldn't be. But nonetheless, you know, we're still here. Um, let Pattern up the likes, people, please. And they should not be. Let me actually make sure that isn't the case, people. One second while I'm still here. Are you sure, dog? I don't think so, you know, because I'm looking at it right now. I'm literally looking at it, bro, and it says it's not. So we're going to have to run with it. If it is, I apologize. We're just going to have to make do with what we've got, people. It is what it is. Big up the Twitch gang. Come on, come on, Tarns. S, I appreciate it, man. I'm in no rush. I'm in no rush to carry on with this. I like, you know, I always get sidetracked because you lot just say some positive stuff, and I just. I just like to say, well, go on, really and truly shout the Twitch gang, as I said already. AM, appreciate it. Podcast was a vibe as always. I listened on Spotify. S and Peter, my guys, my treat, my my Achilles, them, my Achilles. A man said, Skilly Bang and DG, best ways to enjoy lunch break. Hey, <laughs> come on. Your work rate is too mad. Big up to you. I don't know if it is too mad, but we keep going. We keep trying, man. Age isn't a thing, well, in, in football in sorts. I'm not on what you're seeing with Sigurdsson and them thing there. Football in sense. It's all relative, really and truly. Appreciate you, Daniel. Arsenal are older guards back up. What are you saying? Where that link, that sure, that, that sure beat on a night out versus the girl he actually wants, which is Real Madrid. I don't know what's going on there with Odegaard, but I'm, we're going to get into it. We're going to cover Zachariah. All Zachariah questions, keep them on hold, bro. I don't want to purposely ignore it, but I have. In the words of man like Matisse, lateness is greatness. Large up my killy, Matisse. Subscribe to him, for, to him if you want. You know, obviously, he picks a terrible team to support in Chelsea, but he's a good guy. I love the Cape Town. Is Cape Town, is Cape Townians a word? But I love my Cape Town, my South African ones, nonetheless, man. Or if it's not a word, we're going to make it one. If he comes, I hope Odegaard can play eight. I wasn't a fan of Smith Rowe being pushed on the wing, even though he badded it up. I hear that, K. Me, personally, I agree with you. For me, Smith Rowe is our 10. I want to start project ability to play in the eight for Smith Rowe because, I, 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 listen, he's not Grealish, but that's who he should be looking at. Grealish can play in a flat field, flat midfield three. Whether it's his strengths or not is another thing, but he can play there, he can play off the left, can play in the 10. So I want that sort of development for him. So Project 10, locking it down there because he's got a lot to work on. Number eight, and then out of push, slap him, slap him into the eight. But Odegaard, I'd rather Smith throw in the eight than Odegaard. I know Odegaard can do it, or I'd rather bring in Madison to do the eight. Or if we're going to do that, can we get a bit more of an industrial man? Because for me, well, I'll get on to it. But Odegaard, he's just a bit passive, man. Appreciate it nonetheless. Odegaard could be moulded the same way Xhaka was. Ooh, I don't know if Xhaka was ever moulded, but fair play. I wish Arsenal would just pinpoint a marquee player. If you want Madison, then get Madison. Don't get linked with Dosh players that offer little improvement just because they are cheaper. Damn, there is some truth to what you're saying. To be fair to the club, for all their criticisms, they are not the, the media linking... X, Y, and Z with us. And getting any player is easier said than done. But at the same time, 
It is what it is. Funny vids, that's a funny comment. If Odegaard is 50 million or less, buy him. I think you're bugging out with that one, but it is what it is. Smith Rowe getting the 10. Is it trusting your best youngster or a little bit hubris from the young lad? I mean, you need to surround him with other people that can help out, is what I would say. I mean, he would be reliable. He might get goals, but I don't know, man. I really don't know if reliable is the right one. Big up Anthony from Croatia. You see, slowly but surely, the Croatians are starting to, to mess with DG and things like that. 27% shot conversion rate. Big up to him. But for me, again, shot conversion rate is dead if you're not scoring goals, bro. Like, goals win games. Man, are not going to remember, like I said, for shot conversion rates. Man, are going to remember him for things that you actually should be able to do anyways. Pressing, work rate and things. You know, if you don't score, it's a myth. I've offered my opinions on Lokonga's first game. You know, I like that he tries some difficult passes. Maybe a bit more of a consistency in there required, but it is what it is. Titles are both the same, are the same on both on my end. Big up yourself, DG. Love the content, brother. Appreciate that. This guy ain't deluded. He talks sense. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. For every comment like that, you get a nasty one. You get, you're not so deluded. You get, you you live up to your name, appropriate name. I just wish I had a pound either time because one minute they love you, then they hate you. You should be able to get paid regardless, man. I thought Twitch gang was active. They're, man, they are active, man. They're having a day off. And look how it is, man. It's big up, see ya. Shout out to all the Twitch gang. You got, co you got COVID, bro. How do you feel? You mean you've got COVID? I ain't got no COVID. Don't start that. If you got COVID, then I hope you get over it and, you know, peace and love and them thing there. Subscribe to me on Amazon Prime, but I ain't got COVID. Uh, Thomas, hope you get over COVID because that's someone with that. You know, hope you get over that as well, man. You know, thoughts and prayers with you and things. DG back again. Love for the honest and humble channel, my guy. Man like no other. Always look forward to the daily dose of DG cams. I can't put into words what things like that mean, man. Chilling early in New York. Couldn't be in enjoying my day more than chilling with DG and the rest of the fam in the chat, man. You lot are melting my heart. Somebody stop, stop, stop cutting onions, man. Shout out to Twitch gang. No flies on my end, Nathan, man. The weather's kind of changing in you in the UK. It's still hot and that, but it's a bit of a madness. People love putting Lacazette on this pedestal. It's like his hold-up play is original to him. He's not even on Firmino level. I think it's a bit mix and match. I, I don't really like how the fans have treated Lacazette because they over, like with all players, they over gas his creativity, over gas a lot of things you should be able to do. And at the same time, they've they've turned against him. There's no middle ground. Half the people wanking over Lacazette were saying he should be gone, you know, just before he turned his form around and such is life. Again, if you're not doing the job, you need to do your job. I love Lacazette, you know. I think he's a good player for the squad. I think he's needed in the squad, you know. He presses like no other. Again, I don't really want to praise pressing because you should be able to press. And Arteta team that talks about pressing should be able to press. But Lacazette does it. Link-up play. You cost 52 million. You should have link-up play. But again, he's got link-up play like no other. You know, he's strong in that. And, he, and he, you know, I, I think he's got a lot of things to him. But at the same time, do I think he's good enough to be the number one? No, because he doesn't score enough. I think his creativity is extremely overstated by Arsenal fans. And like I said, as much as I praise these aspects, you should have that anyways. But... I do think people gas it a bit. Um, but same way, I think people have turned on Lacazette for no reason. And for me, if you're going to get 15 million for Lacazette, that's dead. Like, you might as well, you might as well just, you might as well just keep him, man. Like, really and truly. Because like I said, no other player in our team has that. And again, at least you, yeah, you could say Martinelli and Balogun get game time and things. But in real time, sometimes we might just need, a, there's some games that you just need a ready-made individual. While I want all these young players to get opportunities, there's certain times where, where that is, where that's needed, people. In my opinion, what should we call the first time stamp? The first 13 minutes, let's call it Lacazette, underrated qualities. That's general questions. Let's just call it Yeah. Beggars can't be choosers. If we need James Madison or, or Odegaard or both, we're lucky. Bro, you might have to get some players that are not quite of that level. I don't think Odegaard is needed. I think that's I think that's harsh. I like Odegaard, just don't think he's the one. Keep these opinions coming, people. Keep these opinions coming. Um, let's let's back on, man. 
Let's get into it now, people. Appreciate everyone that's been locked in. Oh, sorry, sorry about that, John. I was getting worried, man. I thought did someone have fake news about me getting that and whatnot. Please get your comments in and things like that. Subscribe to me on subscribe to me on Twitch via Amazon Prime or just to on Amazon um, as well. I've offered my thoughts on Henderson. You can scroll back, but I would take Henderson for mentality reasons and the rest of it, my dude. But in relation to Lacazette, as I said, keep your... Um, man said Lacazette. Uh, in relation to Odegaard, we're just speaking about Lacazette. Keep your opinions flowing in and things like that. I'm pretty sure you've all, all woken up to the news this morning, you know, emerging out of quote-unquote in-the-know Twitter accounts on, on Real Madrid and now it's filtering its way into mainstream. You know, we all knew that, again... We said it. We said it earlier. We knew we was gonna do the Buendia links. Then we're gonna move on to a next target, and then we're gonna full circle back with Odegaard. Now, as you look and see here, a series of tweets. Now, this is, you know, they're just recycling what's come come out of this 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 guy. And he worked. You know, he's quite. He's a journalist and things like that. If we translate his bio, he's a journalist. He comments on TV um, of Real Madrid. He has his YouTube channel, and he loves his daughter. Which you know, shout to him for being a good dad among any everything. Um, as you look and see here, Odegaard is thinking and wants a return to Arsenal. Let's see what happens. Odegaard's dream was to succeed at Real Madrid, but he is thinking of returning to Arsenal. Neither the players' environment nor the club rule out his departure. Um, and apparently, you know, that Odegaard's future is still on loan, um, unknown. Obviously, last night you did see language about he's unhappy and whatnot. I don't know what's going to happen, you know. There's a long way to go until the end of the season. You hear, you know, Real Madrid have sold Varane and let Ramos go. I don't know if they're looking for a centre-half. I know they're trying to improve their wage structure and whatnot. They're struggling. I know they're trying to get Killian. At the end of the day, Arsenal have never had a better chance to sign him. You know, clearly the club doubled down on getting Odegaard. And I go as far as to say he's our number one target because you did kind of feel, based on what Arteta said, he hid no secret from wanting to keep him permanently from the minute he walked in and Odegaard. But the dream was always there. Now, I don't know if he's going to if this is going to happen quickly, if it is to happen, I don't know if this is one of them where he's in and around Real Madrid's first team in August and it drags throughout the summer. That's probably what is going to happen. But we've never had a better time. You know, if he's not happy with his environment, you know, what's changed? Because we were led to believe a few weeks ago, even a few months ago, he's part of Carlo Ancelotti's plans. He's going to play. He's going to do this. And that still might be true. But what's changed? Has Carlo seen him in preseason and said, you know what, you're going to be part of my team, but you're not going to be playing to the level. I don't quite think you're good you're good enough are they open to letting him go it you know Real Madrid are not really making significant additions in terms of buying people I know they've got Odegaard so I mean they've got Alaba so it might not make sense to let Odegaard go but again if you're Odegaard and you're not you're concerned about Real Madrid you know and his environment He's got a year or two left on his deal. There's never been a better time for Arsenal to lodge a bid. You'd probably get him significantly cheaper than James Madison. You know, for me, I'm trying to do this for 35 to 50 million euros. Obviously, the 50 will all be in add-ons. I'd be happy to bring Odegaard. I know a lot of Arsenal fans were underwhelmed by what he offered. We need to remember, while he underwhelmed off his underwhelming back, he did, did join mid-season. He did join a team that is not playing anywhere near to its potential in terms of the creativity and that, and the many other things that are wrong. I say Saying that, of course, he was a bit passive. Of course, the biggest praise and criticism, as I keep saying with Odegaard, for me, is that in a good sense, he looks like an Arsenal player, cultured, passed the ball of that. When things aren't going right, he looks like an Arsenal player, head down, nervous. You know, he does lead by example, but he plays within himself. And that's the one difference. We'll speak differently about it, but... I think Madison has over him, but same way I don't. I, but so, the way some Arsenal fans speak of my man, you would think this guy is playing League One or something. You'd think he's Danny Murphy. He's certified. You know, he's got resale value. He's technically been at the club already, so there's a bit of less adaptation. You know, he might even play better because now he's got peace of mind. He knows that I'm. It's an Arsenal thing right now, and anything I do is for Arsenal. And then. If these Madrids and these other teams want me in the future, I do my job and things happen. When you're on loan, it's always, you know, I had a bad game. They might not want me. I've had a good game. Are they watching? All of these sort of things. He would obviously be a leader amongst a young team. Obviously, for Real Madrid and Arsenal, it's two different ball games. It's not even just about being a footballer, let alone a good one at Real Madrid. You know, it's different how you have to carry yourself. And sometimes that can make or break someone. I genuinely feel sometimes when people sign for Real Madrid, a man's career there could be done before they've even played at the Bernabeu when they're in training. Because as you lot know, 
it's it's a religious thing. You can't turn you can't turn off from Real Madrid. You walk down the street, it's Real Madrid. It's not, you know, certain footballers. It's not a just play football and go home and come back. This is your life, sort of thing. And I always say, make sure you're ready for it. And at 22 odd years of age, is he obviously a new environment where a manager believes in you? Not saying Carlo does or doesn't could help. Um, so it would make sense. And if you're him, you're not. Why would you sign a new deal straight away? If they, you know, if they put money in front of you, of course. But would it make sense for you to sign a new deal right now if you don't know if Real Madrid are going to play you? What if you play one game this season after tying yourself down? Where if you drag your heels out, they, Real Madrid are going to have to make a decision on your future or risk losing, losing you for even less people. So we would have to see. Um, you know, clearly, I, I personally think Odegaard's our top target. And especially because he might be cheaper in comparison to a, a, a James Madison and for me if that if getting older guard means that you can buy a right back please go and do it um I'm, I'm specifically not trying to say James Madison or older guard because we're going to get on to that so for me I would take him obviously he's a creative man but I think it's only half the battle. We need to get a lot more out of ourselves in the final third. If you sign Odegaard, you need an eight. Or you need to play either Smith Rowe and Odegaard or and or Odegaard as that eight and let them be and let one of them play the 10. And then we go from there. But we'll probably see one of them off the flanks, one in the 10, and still a basic sort of pivot. You need different options. You know, Lokonga and Parte by default for me is our first choice defense and uh, midfield partnership. We need others. Jacko, if you if you say Jacko basically still here, so by default, the games he's played, he'd still be there. So who knows? It could be press Odegaard's camp could be putting pressure on Real Madrid to seek clarity because there is a lot of young players around. There's him, there's Cobo, Kubo, there's uh Ceballos, there's a couple of people in and around the team. 500 odd of you locked in. Please make sure you're hitting the like button and also subscribe via Twitch to me, people. Big up yourselves. Um so yeah, it is it is it is what it is, people. I mean, you know, for me, I just want to see it sorted because I'm used to seeing our Odegaard, Buendia, this guy, even Grealish, Madison, all these guys ultimately to end up with nothing. And the faster we do this, the more they have to train pre before the season starts and stuff like that. And our season's starting very quickly. You know, I'm going to it. On Sunday, we're playing Chelsea. Then we've got Spurs. Then it's Brentford. A buzzing Brentford who's going to be, at, you know, going to be buzzing for life in the Premier League. Obviously, we've got City and Chelsea early doors. So, again, all this pre-season is just pre-season. We ain't really got time for that. We need to be moving fast and acting serious, people. Let me see if there's any official articles that have carried on this, this Odegaard sort of stuff. Um... Martin Odegaard considering, and it, and before I carry on, it's also important to remember, it might not just be an Arsenal thing, you know, just because he was here on loan and we're the ones primarily linked with him, it might not just be an Arsenal thing, you know, other teams could be linked with him, other teams might throw a spanner in the works. Right now, I don't know if he'll have many offers from top, 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 top teams, you'll find, you'll find some more intermediate ones like us, but you never know. What happens if someone's able to sell him a better project and, and, and to develop him better? You know, what if a, a Dortmund sort of thing comes in for him? It'd be silly not to consider it. Obviously, you're only going to step down after Real Madrid. There's only about two two clubs, three clubs in present day that are levels or better. But like you can see here, Martin Odegaard considering Arsenal return as he is unsettled at Real Madrid. And for me, what's changed? Because we were led to believe now he's being given an opportunity, the manager, this, that and the other. What's led to him not settling? Is he not gelling with the boys? I know a lot was made of the shooting drill video that I don't want to go over, but is he not settling? Is he you're not a tactical fit for Carlo? Has Carlo changed? You know, does he get the vibe he's not counted on? Does he want to feel a bit more important? We'll never know. All I care about is, can we exploit this and get somebody? And like I said, you should be trying to grab man for about 30, 30, 35 million euros. We're at 167 likes. There's 520 of you locked in. Can we run up the likes, people, and improve that and get to at least 200? You lot are being lazy. But like you can see here, Martin Odegaard is considering a return to Arsenal as he is struggling to to settle at Real Madrid, according to reports in Spain. As you lot know, he joined us in January and quote unquote, I'm not sure thrived is the right word, but he just said he thrived under Mikel Arteta for the second half of last season. I think he played very well against Leeds. I'm sure against Benfica in the Europa League, he played well, as did William. Um, Leeds at home, Benfica, if I remember, Spurs, he was good. I'm sure Chelsea was good. Um, I'm missing out one more game. There's definitely one more game that Odegaard had, but five games, you know, two goals, two assists in 20 odd apps. It's not really there for what it's worth. He, I, I applaud you for joining us mid-season. It is difficult. Like I said, the way we were playing wasn't set up for attacking players last season to thrive. Obviously, you have to let a man adapt to life in the league anyways, you know, he, and I, I think I think these things went against him. I also think 
He started off underwhelming at Arsenal. Then he, when he found that real purple patch in form, he, I think unnecessarily once he was dropped and then the other, he went off to the international break. We hear he's playing with an injury and then he's out. So again, like with Thomas Partey, Granit Xhaka, David Luiz, Arteta needs to manage his players' workload or manage competitions better or just not play players when they're not fit. Stop playing people on, on injuries. I know footballers are never really fit. Someone's always got an, a niggling knock here and there. But I mean, come on now sort of thing. Um, so I'm not sure thrived is the right word necessarily, but earlier this summer, Arsenal were keen to keep Odegaard either on loan for another campaign or agree a permanent with Real Madrid. So again, it's all a game of chess. We tried to get it done early. That was our number one target. You heard them make no secret of it. Clearly, Odegaard came here to just impress Real Madrid. Nothing wrong with that. It was a relationship of convenience. We needed a creator. You needed a platform. You got it. Um, so we tried. It seemed the language we heard last year is well, last month or so is that it's not going to happen. It is what it is. Maybe that's why you started seeing us linked again with Wendy, which didn't happen. Different position, but relinked with Odegaard, re you know, linked with James Madison, linked with this guy, that guy, and the third guy. Now it seems for whatever reason, these sort of ones that we've been linked with, like Odegaard initially, isn't quite happening for us or isn't working out for us. So Maybe this is why we've gone full circle. Um, Odegaard revealed last month that Real Madrid are planning to keep him for the upcoming season. And he once again said it's his dream to play there. Um, but apparently the re a, a report claims that Odegaard is not 100% happy at Real Madrid and is now considering his future with the prospect of a return to Arsenal potentially available. An example of the apparent disconnect with Odegaard was evident during a training clip released last week as the midfielder's goal during a, sh a shooting drill was met by an awkward silence from Madrid teammates. Um, speaking last month, he said, of course, it has always been a dream to play here. I've been I've been in the club for six years now and has always been the goal. I always want to play. I have said that all the time. Playing is important. So again, has Carlo told you you're not playing? There's something else happening in that regard. I'm not too sure, people. But should we see what the actual Spanish article is alleged to have said? Oh, no, 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 we can't. But you lot are trying to get me a copyright case. But, um, yeah, man, we can't see what that is saying. But that's what the, the that is saying there. And, you know, you look at people like Isco, their futures are, 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 part of, are part of speculation as well. For me, I don't know. Obviously, I can't begrudge him for wanting to play for Real Madrid. But it seems like he keeps changing his mind. One minute I want to do up Arsenal, then I want to do Real Madrid. We haven't really got time for this. Odegaard may have changed his mind about Arsenal transfer as Edu Chase's deal. Let's scroll all the way down. Hopefully this isn't clickbait and there's something of credibility in this article, people. We know he said he had a special place in our heart. We know this, we know that. I'm trying to just scroll to the relevant parts, people. Despite the apparent goodbye, there may be a twist in the tale. Spanish outlet Madrid, Madrista Real have now reported that Odegaard is reconsidering a return to the Emirates next season with the player refusing to rule out departing the burnabout in the next few weeks. The update comes after on Monday evening that the Gunners and transfer chief Edu had not given up hope of right. pardon me of not sign of signing the twenty two year old this summer. Mikel Arteta has previously made it no secret of his admiration for the diminutive playmaker. Um, the, at the end of last season, yeah, we have a clear and strong opinion on what we would like to do. So clearly, Odegaard is the number one target in my humble opinion. Whether it will correlate to happening, I don't know. But as I said, when Odegaard came here on loan, we had no buy option. We need to have plan. We need to have several other planned targets. You know, we keep seeing James Madison, uh, Odegaard, and things like that. Can you find someone that is of the standard to them, but might not be playing in the top leagues and all of these things? We'll have to see. People, I'd welcome Odegaard. Um, for what it's worth, people. So it is what it is in that regard. I'm going to get into Odegaard or, ne or Madison in a second, people, but I just want to see what you guys are saying. As I said, please make sure you're hitting that like button, people. We're at 195. Can we get that to 300 now? I know we're five off 200. I'm counting my chickens before it hatches, but I believe in you lot. Um, I like Odegaard, but I want Madison. Mine made up. Run the likes, people. Fact. A rate Smith role, but for me, something is missing. I'm a big, big fan of Odegaard. He's like a prime Ozil for Germany that will probably score more goals. Odegaard will help us dictate games. And I think with Odegaard, it's a confidence thing. I think he's got the ability to help us dictate games. I think he's got the ability to score goals and get assists. He's, there's, he's 22, 20, 23. He needs to do this stuff now. There's a, It feels like there's an evolution and it feels like he's been written off unnecessarily. There's a lot he needs to improve. For me... 
like with Smith Rowe, but I, I expect Smith Rowe to have things missing, as you said. He's bro, he's 20 years of age. If he played in the first team properly for six months, he shouldn't be the finished dark call. If we were moving like he was, there'd be problems. But for Odegaard, for me, the main thing is confidence. Goals and assists, you need to get that in it, especially if you're a creator. But for me personally, the one thing I will concede if you don't get goals and assists in abundance, even though we need that, especially Arsenal in midfield, is like you said, dictate games, control the tempo, the game runs through you. And I was a bit disappointed in that particular asset of, of Odegaard's game um, when he when he signed for us on loan. As I said, I know he joined mid-season, there's been other factors, but I've just, I just weren't there. And I, I don't think he's quite as brave as I thought he was. I do see him a bit vocal, he leads by example, but I don't think he's as uh, much of a risk taker, as brave in possession as I thought. Like I said, he fits in rightly and wrongly here um there's a lot of development the only criticism i can have and the one black mark on his on his cv for me is he's a confidence man every player's a confidence man but some more than others i think he's one of older guards one of these players i feel you have to keep like every training session or more or less every session you have to keep reminding them how good they are what they can do and things i'm not saying he's soft but i get that vibe um and I don't really need players like that because obviously when things go wrong, you need to face the music. When things go right, take the plaudits. But, you know, bad games happen. You're never a terrible footballer. No matter what people say when you lose, you're never as good as people say you are when you win. So keep balance. And I just feel a lot of players struggle with that. And I think a lot of people play safe. And there was a lot of time Odegaard was playing the safe passes and things like that. Um but again, you never know what confidence can do. And when you've got a manager like Arteta that rates him and likes him and wants to play him, that could tip the balance. I would take Odegaard because it solves our creative problems. Hopefully we could get him for 35, 40 million euros because of his contract. And in theory, for me, hopefully that would mean more money or more bread dedicated towards, for me, getting a right back, you know seeing what you can do with our in addition to what we're doing, seeing if other situations arrive in the market. Like, again, I'm sure United didn't plan for Varane. They were planning for a centre half, but the market became available and they exploited it. For me, if we can do all our business quickly and obviously try and get rid of some, then there might be some situations or some players that become available towards the end of the window that you didn't dream of really and truly. Like us with Mesut Ozil when it happened. Again, I'm dream chasing, but you get the point in that regard. The only criticism I would say on Odegaard is he plays within himself and I need bravery, man. Like I need man that I like, Tierney and, and people of that. Man are brave. You make a bad pass, so what? Try it again. You flop it twice, try a different pass it happens you play a bad game face the music you go again next game and I would have thought I would have got a lot of that at Real Madrid but he just seems like a bit of like a like a teenage a teenage boy that's lacking in confidence and a bit insecure that just needs a father figure in his life I, I get that vibe with Odegaard I like him as a footballer technical he's done that there's a lot more ability to come there's a lot more in Martin Odegaard's game to come whether he comes back to Arsenal or not but that's just what I believe that's the one thing I think Madison probably has glaringly over him is that Madison's got the ability like with Odegaard but he's got that swagger to it as well but we're going to get on to Odegaard or Madison in just a second people but that's what i believe in relation to martin Odegaard. please slap the like button people there's almost 600 of you are locked in um so let's get into that right now in fact martin Odegaard or madison please let me know your opinions before i offer mine because um you know just because i think it's, it's it's a good one people what have we got kamara saying if we choose Odegaard over madison it shows we're not serious i think that's a that's a bit that's a harsh one my guy that's a harsh one my guy that's a really, really, really harsh one. Um, you know, getting even getting, you're right, even getting Odegaard on loan, you know, could be something to help us save money. But Real Madrid, I know they could take a loan fee. I think I think we paid them two odd million, but he's got a year left. Now they're playing a dangerous game if he, you know, obviously for Real Madrid, it's great if they decide to sell him. Who knows? The finances might look better next year. It might be Mbappe, Camavinga, this guy and that guy, Odegaard safe sort of thing. If it's that cool, it, it doesn't matter if he's got a year left or so. But surely it doesn't make sense for Real Madrid to loan him out um, with a year left on his deal. Surely you either want to sell him now or make a decision. Of course, if he bads it up at Arsenal, 20 league, 20, 20 league goals and things. And yet again, if Arsenal have no buy option on that, then, you know, He's an attractive proposition to a lot of people. I'm sure Odegaard on form, there's a lot of people that'd be interested. You know, the man had one decent game and automatically you saw the media start saying City are looking at him. Klopp spoke to him and all of these sort of things. And he's a good player. You know, it's just time for him to prove it. So, yeah, man, I would rather a permanent signing. You know, Madison would be a good statement. I do think people are moving like Madison's up here and Odegaard's down there, you know, based on how they've been. I think they're very even. I think there's different qualities. Personally, I'd prefer a permanent signing of either rule. I'd rather, at this moment in time, 
uh, things can change. I would rather mad. I'm more on the because of the propaganda and everything. I'm more on the Madison one personally, personally, people. But I'm happy with Odegaard. I think Odegaard would be a great side, and I'd be equally as buzzing. I'd have Odegaard back, but forget 35 million and the original 22 million offer. I'd say 17, 18. I think you lot are dream chasing with that one, but fair play. I like Odegaard, but I, I want Madison mine made up. I think I spanned that already. Odegaard's worth a measly 30 million. I can't lie. Odegaard needs to add goals to his game. Appreciate you, my broski. If Odegaard is available, we've got to get him back ASAP. Linked up well with Smith Rowe. That's facts, Tyler. And the one thing with Odegaard, you know, and I think fans are a bit ironic in that, you know, man say we need other people to, 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 to you know, to, to, to take to take the burden off people. But the minute we sign another creator, what's happening with Smith Rowe? Like you saw, there was times Smith Rowe was playing better than Odegaard. Both players weren't playing well or both were affecting the game. As I said, you need different, you need different things. There's going to be games where you need Smith Rowe in the 10 and Odegaard on the left or, or vice versa. Or both of them could actually, you know, one could be an eight, one could be a 10 um, sort of thing. Equally, there could be games for none. In the same way, you need a partnership of Partey and Lokonga to work. You also need Partey in a more expansive man. If something happens to Partey, you need something, a midfield duo or a trio that works. We need different meals. How many of you would go insane if you ate the same meal time and time again? And that's what Arsenal do. And when you eat the same meal, it starts to become stale. It starts to become a bit mundane. It's not inspiring. That sounds a bit like how we play football, how we are currently playing football at Arsenal Football Club. Unfortunately, keep the opinions and them man, them things they're coming people smith row is going to be going to be going to be amazing people keep the opinions coming keep the opinions coming we'll get on to the the rest of them in a bit odegaard's a good player you're right man and let big up the twitch gang unless we get odegaard for cheap i don't want him madison is going to come in and deliver i'm tired of these emotional players man I hear that, but the same way Odegaard has shown it, you know, he has played with his backs against the wall. Like I said, I don't want to, don't, don't listen to me and make it feel like I'm saying he's soft. I just get that. For me, the mentality, I just look at it and I see Madison. He looks like them Utes I used to play Sunday League against them, Essex Utes and stuff in that. They know they're good, but there's certain Essex Utes, you kick them and, and nothing to say with just Essex. There's hard men in Essex and things. But when I say Essex, for me, and I'm from London, we used to play Forrick and them things there. The Essex lads and used to see the Jack, the lads, you know, man, I like Jack Wilshere and Jack Grealish and, and Madison and where they've got their ability, but they've also, they've also, they've also got the swagger, you know, um, you know, they've also got, they've got the swagger. They know it, you know, they're like, yeah, you're going to kick me. I'm going to nutmeg you and I'm going to blow a kiss to your mum and things like that. Them and they're, they're on it. Sometimes it don't look like Odegaard always doesn't always want the ball. Madison does. I'm sh I'm sure when it comes to Leicester, Leicester fans will say something because man, are moving like Madison's up here and once again, um, Odegaard's down there where they're the same. There's little bits and pieces that separate them. Um, they can both, you know, I'd say in Odegaard's case, he's probably he's probably more adaptable. Really. He could probably play in a couple, a more couple of roles. You know, Madison, if he's not eight or ten, where is he playing? You know, you could force him out wide, but. Odegaard can do a job out there. I don't want either there. But yeah, keep them coming, people. Keep them coming. If we get Odegaard for 35 and Madison is quoted at 60, 70, is he 35 million better? I don't think so. So Odegaard for me. And that's the thing. Um, if that's if that's the case, um, sort of thing. I never said, I never said Odegaard, I never said Odegaard's exactly soft. I said sometimes he plays within himself, but you're right. There's sometimes when Madison struggles to control games. I'm just saying the X factor because he believes in himself. I'm not saying Madison doesn't. I'm just, I mean, Odegaard doesn't. It's just, he looks like he's always feeling sorry for himself. At least with someone who believes in himself a bit more, I'm likely to get something. And that's what I mean, Irvin, in that man, I'm moving like Madison's up here and Odegaard's there. People look at Madison with rose tints. Whenever Arsenal get linked with a player, we start over rating them as fans you know Partey man start saying he's Vieira he can pass a ball he can do this of course Partey can pass but now I need to remember what he's made a career of and what he's primarily there you know even when we was linked with Buendia you would have thought he's the best man in the world you know we put these men on a scale we act like there's no weaknesses and then people start saying they're overrated they're this that and the third um I do think Madison is more likely to take this the game by the scuff of its neck by his ones then then Odegaard I think Madison's more likely to set the tempo and say you man I don't know what you man are on but we need to do something it just seems a bit like Odegaard needs other man to get gassed and then he's going to do his thing but I say that he set the tone against Spurs he set the tone against Chelsea pivotal role in us coming behind from from behind against West Ham I'm sure he played against Leicester you know he had a very good game at home against Leeds now you know 
I think he's done definitely a lot better than 20 appearances, two goals, two assists are led to believe. But it is what it is. I do think there's more pressure on Madison because he's going to cost an arm and a leg. Do I think he's potentially worth the fees being quoted at this point, moment in time? Probably not. He might be in the future. I'm not too sure. Um, please don't spam. Anyone who's spamming, moderators, get rid. There's no time for anything else. No time for anything else, man. Madison nudges it. Odegaard with young attackers that can make runs and we're golden. Facts. Madison is much better. I think that's harsh. I don't know for much. I think at this moment in time, they don't, neither one is clear of the other. That's significantly better or whatever you said, or much better for me. You know, I don't, I think they're in the same bracket. I don't think Odegaard's up here and Madison's down there because neither, what have they both given to the game? Odegaard's had a fantastic loan spell at, uh, of significance at Sociedad. Madison's had little bits and pieces at Leicester. They ain't really done much in the game at, for fo in footballing purposes. Really like that. In the in the in, in terms of household names in the world of football, man. So you can still be a captain. You look Abamian's captain. I'm pretty sure you say he's not worth it. You know he leads by example, but just because you have the captain's band, don't mean you don't play within yourself. Don't mean you don't feel safe for yourself. He does have leadership qualities, but I'm pretty sure you lot criticize Abamian, so it's not making sense. Um, to be fair, obviously, Madison, Madison's got that arrogance, but sometimes arrogance can, can be masked. You know, insecurities can be masked as arrogance. So it is what it is in that regard. So this is what I mean. I don't think one is clear of the other. I'm happy with either one. Madison makes me think, stand up and think, yo, serious. Odegaard, I'm like, all right, cool, we're going. But I'm happy with Odegaard, man. I think he'd be a fantastic signing and people, are, I don't know what, what's, what's, what's wrong with you lot. A man said, beggars can't be choosing. I'd take him over nobody. Madison's a pipe dream. Fundamentally, facts. There it is there, man. If we can get Odegaard for cheap, it would be a good deal. Facts. And both have something to prove. For Madison, he'd have something to prove because if you come to Arsenal for big money and it's not looking and it's and it's not looking good, man, are gonna say, "Roll, Rogers made you look good." You know how are you gonna get in the England team? End of the day, man, are just gonna see the transfer fee. That's it. You know that's all that people care about. Um, so Madison's got a lot to prove in the game, really and truly. You know, Odegaard's got a lot to prove because he ain't really done much in it. Tapping Merch and Aubameyang didn't miss last season. Odegaard's assist would be much better. If only it was that easy to correlate. If your mum had a willy, she'd be your dad. It's not that simple, is it? You know? That's just like me saying Ozil would simply have the top goal scorer boot just because Giroud was missing chances. Even though I believe it, it's not true. You know, really and truly. Your opinions are off the top, bro. How did I not know about this channel? Chop archives, no clue, but now you do. So make sure you hit that sub button. We need depth, so I'll take him. The balls that Madison can do, I haven't seen Odegaard do in that fashion. I think that's harsh. I think man are sleeping on Odegaard now. Odegaard can play ball. For me, the only thing is just if he's really up for it, if he's on being a leader sort of thing, you know, the, the swagger. Let's be real. Mad uh, Odegaard can play ball. Let's not cap, man. Please stop spamming. They're roughly on the same level. They're roughly on the same levels. Madison isn't far better. I agree, DG. They're on the same bracket. So I'd rather get the bargain since we need to improve other positions. I'm happy with either one. I don't think Madison is happening purely because, you know, if Madison, if Odegaard says he wants to leave and the situation that Real Madrid is obviously in, you can get him, you know, Madison, they don't want to, they don't want to sell him. It's as simple as that. So you're going to have to pay more than Madison's worth, probably give them some favorable bonuses and stuff. You know how the deal's made out, but attainable, you know, probably, probably in terms of the f the fees, probably pay more over a less period of time, you know, and things like that. So, and obviously there's the pressure. And for me, whoever comes in, I hope that they're given a chance because if you're bringing in this 10 or whatever, let's just say 10, let's keep them what they are. You need to get the midfield pivot sorted. Now we've got Lokonga who I believe in and part. If something happens to either one, where are we going past that? You know, you need a more creative eight. That's why I think you need our and either of these lot because you're going to see this 10 dropping deep. Yeah, you can force Smith Rowe into the lineup, one of them out wide, and then they can link up with each other. But 
if to get the best out of a 10 in this team or the most creative man of the midfield, that pivot needs to be spot on. Same way we said for, to get the best out of these right these right wingers, to even see a better Pepe, to see an even better Pepe, an even better Saka, an even better Martinelli, you need the fullbacks to be spot on. You know, we need to build up relationships and partnerships in this team and it's not happening. It's the same way we sign Partey, there's no partner, we don't defend well, we don't press and then we think just, oh, we signed you your big money, work your magic. Same way we signed Gabriel and thought he would fix everything defensively. In the same way, if there's not an emphasis on improving defensively properly, Ben White isn't going to solve anything. Like with Odegaard, like with half our signings, they'll come in, have a great, you know, first couple of months, bad it up. You know, we might be losing and they look like the one good guys, you know, and then they have what we always say, they get infected with the Arsenal disease. They start looking like bottlers. That's because we buy players and we don't know what pieces to the puzzle they're solving or what sort of ingredient to reach the final meal they are. So regardless, I think you need a more creative man. I'd rather Madison because Odegaard don't score enough, in my opinion. I hear that, but I'm always just, I like, always like to challenge things. How many goals does Madison have? Because for me, I have Madison down as more of a goal scorer than, than obviously... Obviously, obviously, my obviously, obviously, my man forgot his name, Odegaard. But again, statistics paint the the full picture, really, really, and truly. Imagine we got both, you know. Then we'd then Arteta would really be on his ass and Wenger thing. You know what? Forget it. You know what? We might as well just move mad. Smith Rowe, Madison, Odegaard, everyone just run about. Force the next creative man on, on the flanks. Everyone just run about and do creative stuff. Um, let me see how much goals Madison has because he is he's I have him down as someone that gets goals and things, but is that true? Now in 98 Premier League appearances, he's got 21 goals and 17 appearances. Um in the championship, 15 and 47. Obviously, it was a young G them times there. So I'm not really trying to use that against him. How many goals has he got for Leicester? 27 goals and 20 assists in 118 appearances. Now I'm not saying that's that's bad. It's not, but you know, would you have would you call someone a goal scoring midfielder then with them statistics? I do think it's a good return because, like I said, he's only 24. Some of them you have to give him a bit of a blight because he was a young guy and things like that. But is how much is that? Now I'm gonna well, I've got it here in front of you. You know, that's how that's his statistics for less um for for all the clubs he's played for. You know, he's played been on loan at Aberdeen. He's obviously came through at Car at Coventry and then went to went to Norwich. You know, his Norwich statistics are good. 16 goals, 13 assists in 53. That's where you need to be signing these men when they're there, bro. When they're at Coventry and Norwich, that's when you need to move for people like Madison, not when they're at Leicester in a good situation where he's going to cost an arm and a leg. But, um, if we look at Odegaard again, I'm not going to pay too much attention to his Real Madrid statistics because they're rubby, more so where he's been on loan and things like that. Which again, he's a young man. It's, I don't really want to use this, 22 and 24. But I guess there's a tiny bit more resale value. So he does have goals over Odegaard, uh, Madison. But uh, um, but yeah, Odegaard's statistics are quite meaty. Even what I would describe as a handsome return, I thought he had at least had double figures for Sociedad. First real chance I felt he got seven goals, nine assists. I know he was in Holland for a bit, but I feel he was too young them times. Good return at Vitesse, really. 11 goals, 12 assists. But I feel he's extremely young and the Herve Herve Vien long was quite poor. Um. So he does have goals over them. What what we need is to make sure you're going to build a team. I'm not saying around them, but around them because they're going to struggle. If you just think, yo, bring these creative men in, they're going to work their magic. It, you, life don't work like that. Life, by, or by that logic, Arsenal would have the best defence in the league. I'm always fucking signing centre-halves. You know, how many fullbacks have we actually signed? How many fullbacks have we actually got, people? You know, signings is half the job. You need to know how they fit in. And especially from an attacking sense, we were ninth for goals. Is there any coincidence that Odegaard has signed for this club? He's not really had the best season in terms of goals and assists, together with William not really performing, Aubameyang over the course of the season. Lacazette came into his own towards the end, as did Pepe, but not a single attacking player excelled for the whole season. That's be because of their own fault. They need to take responsibility. But same way, there's something we're doing or worse. So we're not doing to get the best out of them in the training ground. We should not be ninth for goals. Whatever you've got to say about any of our attackers, I'm not saying they're the best in the league, but not if you understand football, you do not want to play against them. Even guys like City, they do not want to play against a Bamian, Lacazette and whatnot. No one wants to play against good players. You know, they should be able to cause problems. So it's something that they will need to address, but it's also something the manager also needs to look at people. Um, 
and whatnot. It's a very inter it's a very interesting debate, really and truly. Um, I'm trying to scroll down to find my notes. They're not notes of significance. Um, but I just tried to find like who would I rather? And for me, I'm sitting on the fence. I'd I'd pre I'd prefer both. When I look at Madison, I have him down as slightly more proactive. Now, Odegaard showed me incidences where he's proactive, where he's tried to change the game. But I just think Madison is a bit more on it from minute nine, from minute um, zero to 90. Um, I think he's a bit more proactive. I think he's a tiny bit more nastier. I think he's got that swagger to go with his ability. Like he knows he's the shit, pardon my language. He can obviously play as an eight. And I don't like the Premier League proving thing because it's not relevant if the player is not good. And I rate Odegaard, but there is that Premier League proven aspect. With Odegaard, it's not really fair because I wouldn't quite say he's Premier League proven, but he has had that six months or so from January. So it's not like he's, he's someone that we're signing and we still need to give him time to adapt, but he's got kind of got it in it. So it's cool. I have him down as slightly more reactive to Madison. He's a bit cute or a bit more passive. Um, I do think he lacks self-confidence consistently. And I think that's something he's got to arrest himself. I do think that's something that might get addressed with Arteta. You know, someone who shows more of a care and sort of side to him, someone that makes him feel important. I feel to, you know, with playing well, you will get that. And I think he hasn't got that. And I think away from everything, that's one thing he probably struggles with at Real Madrid. Um, he, like I said, but a very good player. For me, what makes it attractive to sign him due to the length of contract and what's going on at Real Madrid, as opposed to Leicester, he's cheaper. And, you know, as shown with Varane, Real Madrid kind of need money and things like that, you know. And another season, Varane, might, you know, they might have told United where to shove it because they've let Ramos go. They're broke. They want money. So, again... And we're broke. We need money. So getting older guard might be cheaper. That might, and I keep saying it, I'm speaking it into existence. Hopefully, you know, that money that you save that can be thrown towards a right back or more reserves could be thrown towards another, uh, an out and out number eight, really and truly. Because, you know, it's not just a 10 or an eight. You need both or you need, you know, at a push, I'd rather get an eight because you've got Smith Rowe and you'd have a partner for Partey. But I think you need both. It's like last season. It weren't just a case of Partey or the number eight or the hour at the time. You needed both. And I think the club do a very good number on convincing the fans that they, you know, not that, that it's either or that it's the less of two evils. You need both. Um, in my opinion, we go for Odegaard because this is, um, that is the player who Arteta was betting on to stay. This is who he wanted. You know, it does feel like there's a long way to go and stuff. Um, I do think he plays within himself at times, but he's quality. And I'm not saying Madison isn't guilty of, of them, you know. Madison, you could have probably went to the Euros, but why did Mount, why did Mason Mount, Foden and Grealish get ahead of you? Now, they're all quality players, but why did they? They're offering something that you didn't. I know, you you know, he struggled with fitness towards the end, but why were you kind of dropped out the Leicester team? You know, because I do think man, I'm moving like Madison is amazing and things. He's a quality player. He is amazing. But, you know, he's no worse or better than than Odegaard of significance. They're in the same bracket. Such is life. The one we the one we don't sign will probably be the one everyone says we should have signed and, uh, and this, that and the third. But you get the point. Exactly. And like you can see here, the difference in price may make the difference fundamentally. And we've got a good understanding with with Real Madrid, because obviously we've been robbed with a couple of loans, not so much Odegaard, more so Ceballos. So it is what it is in, in, in that regards, folks. As you lot can see here, emerging reports are just all saying the same thing in relation to Odegaard. But the thing is with this, there's no legs to it, you know. It just it just keeps saying Arsenal, this was 14 minutes ago, so let's use this as an example. We refuse to give up. He's keen to go to the Emirates, but we haven't heard why. We haven't heard, you know, Carlo has said you're not going to play. Real Madrid are trying some other targets. Real Madrid actually trying to get Kylian Mbappe or whatever, so we're selling you. They don't think you're as good. You haven't impressed in pre-season. You are not homesick, but you're missing London. You want to return. We don't know why. It just says he, you know, it's just come out. It's come out today and said Arsenal have refused to give up. It said he's keen to leave Real Madrid, but it hasn't told us why. For me, I think Carlo's told him something that, you know, he might have said something at the start and pre-season's happened and there's something different now. Arsenal have not given up hope on signing Real Madrid ace Martin Odegaard. He spent the second half of last season on loan at the Gunners, making 20 appearances in, the, in, in all comps. Um, he only managed to play a part in four goals. Now, for me, what would impress me more with Odegaard? We need goals. We need goals in our midfield, Arsenal, 100%. 906 of you locked in. I'm very appreciative. Please make sure you're hitting that like button. You're subscribed on Twitch and you're also checking out the DG merch. It's ridiculous what you lot are on. Um, like I said, people, we need assists and goals and all of those sort of things because we don't get... Uh, it, uh, the guys that are paid to score goals in our team are struggling with that. And we don't, and we all know as, as an Arsenal fan base that the goals aren't spread spread out evenly among the team. I know goal scoring midfielders are not really around like that per se, but we haven't really got that. So I'm not going to say goals are not important for me. 
But goals can also mask games because you look at Bruno. Bruno can't control a game for United at this moment in time or he can't control it to the IQ a player like Bruno should have because you saw it for Portugal. It got dropped out. More other people like João Matinho and Renato coming into the team. So for me, if he can dictate the tempo of the game, control the influence of the game and stuff like that, that is more important for me than the goals because you've seen it. We can't break down low blocks. When there's bare space and, and whatnot, then we can do our thing, but we struggle. And if he's able to do that, if there's a swagger about him, if he wants the ball, you know, because the ability to do it and wanting to do it are two different things. Too many times you've seen it at Arsenal. People play safe. They play it to the Smith, Rose and Sackers, you know. I'm not going to throw anyone in it, but certain midfielders stand next to opposition midfielders so they know they can't receive it. People play the safe pass. We need people who want to take risks. We need people who, who have it. I always say to you, competence, confidence and consistency. A lot of these Arsenal players have one or two of the three. Confidence. It's all right to have confidence when everything's going wrong, but when there's pressure, Lord knows last season, if COVID weren't there, there would have been bare pressure on these lot because of how we're moving. You've still got to perform. I always say the fans love you subjectively. You lot have to be part of a siege mentality, you know? Because you lot are you lot are army you lot are army guys, you know, for 38 games. And I just think people, when things aren't going right, Arsenal, only a couple men can stand up to be counted. Only a couple men are on it. Just like when we went out of the Europa League, even on the worst of days, Saka and Smith Rowe are doing more, they're more experienced man. I think we need that. The door hasn't been completely shut, shut people. Um, allegedly, according to football.london, Odegaard wants to fight for his place at Real, but hasn't shut the door completely on a return to Arsenal. Real Madrid are interested on listening to in listening into office for Odegaard who has failed to stake a claim to a first team play since joining at the tender age of 16 we all know he wished us goodbye and he had a good six months so again that six months could probably help him and let's click on this people so again I'm sure a lot of this is off the back of a mediocre game for him against Rangers oh I thought I spilt my smoothie on my t-shirt apologies people Real Madrid midfielder Odegaard blasted for Ibrox's performance. Martin, wake up, man. Real Madrid midfielder Martin Odegaard has been slammed after his performance in Sunday's friendly defeat at Rangers. Um, he started the game. Apparently, an editor of AS said, Odegaard is an eternal promise surrounded by homegrown players. He should have said, here I am. What is there to do? Like at Arsenal, do they all play for him? Martin, you are in Real Madrid. Wake up, macho. Apparently, he's gone on to insist Odegaard should have performed better and showed greater presence. Probably true, to be honest. The Norway captain insists Romeo was outshunned by... Insists Roqueo. Sorry, insists was outshunned by his less experienced teammates promoted from Raul's Castilla side. So again, he's being he's being outshunned by other people. And for me, this Arribas guy is quite good. The academy, the best are very good. Good Victor Cos. Sergio Arribas and Miguel Gutierrez, who's a left back we looked at, all with a very good attitude. There is a wonderful academy, but the academy is there to help, not to be the basis of the project. When they are in the remaining 16, we'll see. What worries me the most is the attitude of Luka Jovic and Odegaard. Hopefully those who return, especially Bell, do not go along that line. And again, there's a lot of people that need to be moved on at Real Madrid. Like you see, Luka Jovic, Ceballos, there's ha bare halfway house, guys. And you'd imagine one or two are sold to raise funds, people. So, like you see there, it looks a bit long for him, really. And based on, you know, it doesn't seem like he had the best of games. But that's nothing to, to get on to him about, people. Um, I don't know where, where he's compared. And, I mean, a week's a long time in football. If you go here, apparently we was told to forget this. So, this is why it's a game of chess. It's a long window. And this is why I said I'll shut my mouth until the end of August. But if the business hasn't been done in August, I've got a lot to say, people. Um So it is what it is, man. There's a lot of games to be played, you know. I'm pretty sure before the day's out, you know, this 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 rumor might be put to bed and then happen again. So we'll have we'll have to see what happens in that regards. But in relation to Madison versus Odegaard, at this I'm on the fence, man, because there's qualities in Madison. I think you know the swag, all of this stuff. But I just think people sleep on sleeping on Odegaard. I don't think people are deep in how good he is. Like he's a very good player. So I'm on the fence at this moment in time. I'd take Madison over him because there's just I don't know why, man. It's just a big money signing and things. But I'd be over the moon with Odegaard personally. I think he's a good player, and I don't know why people are sleeping on him. But yeah, man. Let me see what you lot are saying. That's how I feel. Let me put Martin because it just looks a bit better, doesn't it? Please make sure you're smashing that like button and you're subscribing and them things there. Um, so, yeah, let's carry on, man. 
Uh, Odegaard was a wonder kid, even called the next Messi. You can't be telling me this guy doesn't have a bit of arrogance in him after all of that. Of course, he's got a bit of arrogance about him. He's a professional footballer, but I'm just saying to the standard. And for me, I wouldn't read too much in being called the next Messi because that can have an issue on you people. I'd rather Madison because Odegaard don't score enough, in my opinion. DG, have you thought of this take? Odegaard probably believes in his source more than Madison, but Madison wants to improve more. That could be it, but I get the vibe. Oh, one thing I'll give Odegaard is that he wants to improve. He wants to be better. He wants to help the team. And I get that from Madison. So I'm not too sure in that. I mean, confidence can, can like I tell you, look, confidence can show itself in, 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 in all sorts of ways. And I've seen it in Odegaard. He's more leading by example. He does shout and stuff. But for me, you've got to believe in yourself all the time. It's just how do you react when something's going wrong? And when the chips are down, it looks like Odegaard is, you know, he doesn't fight against it. He just crumbles really and truly. That's just, that's just how I feel. But again, things can change quickly in football. So, yeah, man. A man said Torreira in the tent. You're bugging up. Madison is much better. Arsenal should not buy players who disappear during big games because Madison sure as hell doesn't. Odegaard still really, still really young man. He's easily the best cam we've linked to. Technically, plays very well with Smith Rowe. He's the perfect signing. I'm happy with both. Odegaard has more ambition. That's why I'm not too sure where you got that from. But okay, Odegaard literally unlocks Pepe for us. People are forgetting that. I think you got to give credit, Pepe his own credit, but I feel like Madden's career has been stagnant for a year or so, potentially injury prone. I'm not really watching the injury prone stuff, but I do think people act like 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 Madison shouldn't be a slightly better player than he is right now as well, and acting like he hasn't been he hasn't been locked out of the team. Please stop spamming. Unfortunately, that's another one that we've been blocked. I prefer Odegaard. I mean, Alward than Odegaard. He's a different player, but I'd prefer that man. What else have we got? Odegaard's work rate is better as well. That's a that's a very good point. The work rate defensively, Martin Odegaard puts in a shift. You're con you're completely correct. Odegaard for cheap and Ramsey on loan with an option. No thanks with Ramsey. Let's leave that one there. I think we we'll leave that one. Odegaard doesn't grab the game by the scruff. He's very soft. We need impact. Why can no one see this? I think people be very surprised with with Madison then. I think people are looking at Madison with, with rose tints. Odegaard, captain of his country, while Madison is still struggling to get into the England team. Not really fair to be fair to, to either party. You know, I'm pretty sure, you know, Mad Odegaard in current form might not have gone to the Euros if he was English. And Madison could be Norway captain if he showed it. You know, let's be a bit fair that the scenarios aren't quite the same. Frank Kessier and Zachariah would be great for Arsenal. I don't think we need any, definitely not two of those players. Good, interesting opinions. I just prefer Madison and Smith Rowe than Emil Smith Rowe and Madison. Madison is a goal scorer. Odegaard is a workhorse. We need both. I'd like to see both come to the club. Facts. Odegaard and Smith Rowe interchanging the 10 would be good cover. Odegaard is better off the ball. Eve or in my opinion, but all this noise for me, just wait until the window closes. Facts. Madders is the better on set pieces. Arsenal have no one good taking them. Madison is more of a statement signing, which is why most fans probably want him. Obviously, he's also good, but Odegaard would also be a great option. Chris, bang on the money. Bang on the money. Pereira is better than both. Not quite sure. Madison literally disappears during big games. Just watch the last four games of the season. T, this is why I, I you've got to approach these things with balance. You know, in football, people look at things with rose tints. As I said, um, people what people look at things with rose tints. People make out Odegaard is down there and Madison is all the way up here. Where they're the same bracket. They're both good players. It doesn't have to be because I want Madison, Odegaard is not good. Because I want Odegaard, Madison is overrated. It, it, come on now, man. I mean, Odegaard, do you know what it is with Odegaard? He'd have to force it, you know. He has to force it. And I, there's a, it's still early, but he'd have to do his job as well. He'd have to do his job, man. He'd really have to do a lot. Even, even Madison, they both have to do a lot to get this move. Maybe more so Madison because obviously... 
Leicester look a bit more healthier financially as a football club relative to what Real Madrid are trying to do. But both of them would probably have to force it, man. Not quite sure. Big up everyone in the comments. Not quite sure what that's saying. Both good play. Both are good options, but I hope the club looks at the player we really need. Odegaard, and I think they go with Odegaard purely because they've worked with him. They've seen him up in training. They know him already and he looks a bit cheaper. Odegaard can play right wing, so that can cover Pepe for AFCON. Ooh, I want to see a bit more that, that actual wingers there, but facts. Madison claims he is an eight. Odegaard, for me, only 22. Happy with either one, man. What I don't want to see is talking about William and, and Lacazette playing in the 10. That's what I'm not on. No clue what Man United's got to do with any of this, but facts. Whatever you got to say. We've got a we've got a ball winner. I think we need a ball player now. We've got Lokonga and Party. We need someone who can pass a football. Up the likes, 400 is the target, people, and subscribe, new viewers. Again, where are we at in terms of likes? Please make sure you're hitting the like button, you're subscribing, you're following on Twitch. Shout to the Twitch gang as well. Where are we at in terms of things? We're at 392. We're flirting with 400 people. We're close. We're not there yet, man. I don't think we'll buy both players, but if it's that simple, why not? I think an option to buy would be silly. And if we're going to do the option to buy thing, we might as well just leave it, man. I don't care if Real Madrid say we promise to speak to you guys. Learn our lessons because maybe you could have got him even cheaper now. Um, cheaper because his, his value was arguably even worse when he was at, you know, he came off the back of a good spell at Sociedad, but he immediately stopped playing. We could have got him for dirt cheap. You know, I don't, if, if you're going to get him on loan, you need a, a buy option. I don't want to hear Arteta say we're chatting at the end of the season, or Odegaard saying the same, because we don't control any variables. We're developing another player for them, which he'd have a year left on his deal. He'll be hot property. They either give him a new deal, Real Madrid use him, or, you know, if he really excels it and shells it down with a year left and he's batted up the Prem, he'll get off Red Myers and Arsenal will be left with the short change. So I would like, if we're going to do the loan thing, you need to get him with an option. You need to, or they just leave it. I hear it. You know, if we're going to, Sign a, a more industrial midfielder, an eight and a half, a right back, and there's no funds for a 10, then cool, get him on loan. But we're, we're going to go through the same things again and again and again and again. So if you are going to grab him on loan, do the thing, man. Just have him have that buy option, man. Someone needs to sign William. Bro, no one's signing him for them peas, man. No one signing him. We're, we're in trouble there with William, man. I agree. Odegaard needs to be settled at a club, not consistently loaned out. I, I think he'd be great at Arsenal. And for him, if he wants to be, he needs to, do you know what? The only one that can answer it is, in, is Odegaard. He needs to ask himself in his heart because, you know, you see inconsistencies. Obviously, media start remixing things and make stories and carry on a certain sort of way to sell stories. But for me, you need to make a decision. If you what you want in your heart is to make things happen at Real Madrid, try that. If you want to leave, if some if even a small inkling inkling is saying not even to come Arsenal to leave to excel and advance as a footballer, you need to do it because what scares you the most in life is what's going to improve you. I couldn't begrudge him for staying at Real Madrid. Carlo Ancelotti, new manager, knows it done now. You know which is why we thought this one was off. Um, young players, you know they can't spend money, so it's either. Carlo has to play it safe and lean on the Calva House, the, the Marcelos, you know, the people that have been part of Real Madrid for a specific, a, a long time and a specific period. Or he starts giving the young guys new opportunities and things, in, you know, so it is what it is. It all depends how how Carlo Ancelotti is trying to set up Real Madrid, because for me, if I'm Odegaard, I'm, everyone's going to say everything at the start of preseason. But now, as we're getting to the season, I'm asking Carlo, one, honestly, what do I need to improve on? Where I'm not asking any no no divine right to play or anything, but where do you see me if I'm not in your starting lineup? What do I need to improve at? How realistically can I force the issue? And, and how do you think you're going to use me this season? You know, all you can ask for is honesty. If Carlo's giving you sideward signals, then you know you know what you need to do. You know, I I know he wants to make it at Real Madrid, and I have on ability. I think if if given a chance, he can. But sometimes in life, we need to just 
look, look away with things with our heart and look at our brain. Look at Sabayos. It's a different one, but Sabayos, if Real Madrid don't give you a chance this year, you might as well move because you're not developing, you know? So we'll have to see. It's a very interesting one. I don't think there's any rights and wrongs, but it's an interesting summer and it's going to be a long summer and we're nowhere near the finishing line, the finishing hurdle or whatever you want to call it. Odegaard is one footed and blocks the right hand side, and Madis is both footed. Oh, I'm not sure Madison is. I'd describe Madison as both footed, but fair play. Greetings, DG. I appreciate Odegaard as a superb talent, but do not think he's a good fit for Arsenal due to the softness in our team. I feel we need more mentally tough players to get back to the top. I do think he's strong mentally. I just don't think, you know, I, I do think he's definitely strong mentally. Just, I'm not saying you're saying this, but just because he's, beat, he's not beating off his chest and, you know, the Tony Adams, the the Tierney's, these sort of thing, you know, the the passion sort of thing that were accomplished, where 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 we we find that that leads to accomplishments in this country, and we're accustomed to here. It don't mean you're not a leader. There's many ways of leading, but I hear you. I really do hear you. For me, it's just how he reacts to failure. What scares me? But it's still there in his game. You can see the other. You saw it at at Sociedad. You saw it at Vitesse. You saw it. You know. You've seen it. You you see it in his game. I don't know what happened to Sabaos. Sabaos is Sabaos is no longer of any relevance to Arsenal Football Club. So, pff, don't care. Really don't care. Do you see us making the signings we need this season? I see Arsenal just doing up the Chelsea model, buying young to sell them on. Doesn't look like our main eleven will be proven much if all. I have hope now. Hope and whether it happens is two different things. But I have hope because a blind man should be able to see. The squad isn't good enough. The squad's good enough to make more of a meal of top four than it should be. You know, some of the problems that you've seen with Arsenal, there's no excuse. It's not just a buy players thing, you know, but I'd imagine, yeah, because a blind man could see if you keep this exist that existing starting 11 or you don't add in some quality, forget about it. Forget about everything. Odegaard, for me, only thrives in a dominant team. Odegaard is a fighter, but not a leader. I mean, if you fight, you're a leader. So I think we're trying to be a bit too technical, but I hear you. I'm scared of Madison's career if he joins us. Fuck that, man. Sign for the club, man. Do you... Oh, you've already answered that. Apologies, my guy. Big up the members. Them out in abundance. Need the likes at least 500. Make sure you're hitting the like button, everyone. Should I say ideal partners for Partey? You're talking about the partners I think Partey should have? Well, him and Lokonga need to be able to play. You need to bring in an Awa and a Partey to be able to play or someone of that skill set. You need that 8.5 and Lokonga to be able to play together. And you also need, you know, if something goes wrong, your plan Z partnership. We need about three. We need one, for me, one real midfield partnership that works. And then you have two free ones that could be used in the same way with our centre-half partnerships. You know, you Ben White and Gabriel, is that what you're doing? You train them up, do that. If something happens, Marie and Ben White, Holden and Ben White, uh, Marie, and, Marie and Holden, you know, many, again, Gab Gabriel and this and all of this sort of stuff. There's too many to just do off the dull minute people. But I do think that's that's where that's where we've got to look at as well. You have one real co core partnership and then obviously rotation is a thing. You know, you start, you start, you start looking past it. It's like at times the lines gets too blurred. Everyone's too much on an equal footing at this football club, which is a good thing. But the lines get blurred because suddenly you start starting, you know, we might beat West Brom next week and we're playing City and certain man might have played well, but they're not levels against City. And they kind of, that's where we get our, our slap in the face. You know, but we need several, you know, we need several midfield piv um, partnerships, working partnerships, in my opinion. Like I say, always say freedom within a framework. You have one central system. It's a 38-game period. Something happens to part, as you saw last year. It's irrelevant how good he is because he's not fit anymore. We're back to square one. That's why I'm happy to have part in Lokonga. That's why I wouldn't. I don't think we should be going for a Basuma or someone of that skill set now because you've got two of them in the squad. But I wouldn't mind it if something happened to one of them. Do you get? In the same way, even if... Beggars can't be choosers. We need to confirm someone in it. So if we grab an eight and a half or a more expensive partner for party, if something happens to them, we're back to square one. But right now we need to just start moving towards having a 25 man squad, 11 starting that we can believe in sort of thing. So yeah, man, that's what I believe, bro. And what's the female term for bro? Brodesses, we'll call it that really. 
Big up everybody locked in. Please make sure you're hitting that like button as well, people. Next timestamp coming on. Very good. Both are good players, but would really take Pereira over both. He tackles, scores, takes free kicks. What he has over both, he takes on one man on the route to score. Goes, oh, I'm not sure. I'd, you know, Madison, I mean, Pereira is great, but I'm not sure I'll take him but over both. But fair play. Think you're living a dream world. Madison tries to shoot at goal while we just want to place the ball in, in goal in some tick attack or move. I mean, you know, sometimes that could be said for doing the wrong things. Madison is going to be a 20 goal scorer. We need to get him for that. All right, let's just see what he can do, man. After what we saw, Odegaard is worth 60 plus million. If we were to offer 50 for him right now, money talks and we may get it done exactly. But like you said there, bro, you got to put the money on the table. I'm going to keep banging on until 900 likes are hit. Love the engagement, but you lot need to show the like button some love. Appreciative of that, man. Please stop spamming. Moderators, please. We're cleaning up spamming. I don't care who it is. Mop it up. Maybe I'm being too negative, but I don't see us moving on players. We need gone this window either. Everything is being dragged out, whether we we buy or sell. If we sign Odegaard and a holding mid, we can challenge for top four. I mean, the mentality has to change before everything, man. Everything. Don't matter who is signed. Yeah, sis, bro. I'm even mad. Hey, that I had a mare, bro. Man could have just said sis. <laughs> hey, I'm moving like Mustafi in front of in front of our keeper in the back line for us. I'm moving mad. Big up DG. Just got back from work. Nice to see the engagement levels. Shout out to the nine to fivers and the grinders and everyone taking care of their business. Appreciative of that. Do you have faith in stats? Odegaard's passing is above everyone's. I have stats with context, you know. I need to use my eyes and then look at the stats. What picture does the stat tell me? If I see someone who's a good defender, what could the stats tell me? Does he struggle in the air? I might not have ever seen him struggle in the air, but does he struggle with headed situations? So that's something to prepare on. I think the problem with stats, people don't know what they're looking for apart from agendas. And as you know, you can find bare things to match whatever agenda you've got. And whatever you're looking for, there's something called a confirmation bias. And I think a lot of people, when they speak about football, they have that. That's why I always praise you lot for having different opinions. You know, you lot, I, listen, I'm not telling you lot what to think. My opinion is not better than yours. Yours are not better than mine. We're all football fans. But what I like from is learning. You lot have different perspectives and stuff. You take things away. Ivan Tony over Tammy, 100%. I'd rather Tammy. Um, I think we need a keeper. But, you know, between Leno's half-heartedness, the market, needing to move people on and needing to address get Ben White over the line, get a right back and all the others, are we actually going to do it? Pereira's quality, but I'd rather bowl for them over him, personally. Pereira's quality should not be in the championship. Pardon me. We need a goalkeeper, we need a goalkeeper, right back, centre mid cam as a minimum. King, Facts. Do you like Xhaka staying? No, I don't want Xhaka to stay purely because I don't doubt Xhaka's professionalism. You know, he didn't get his move to her for Berlin. He was public enemy number one. He kept going in it. Um, one second. Do you want Xhaka to stay? Split one seventeen. Um, apologies, my dudes. Um, and do that, sisters. Um. I don't mind him staying because I don't doubt his professionalism. Of course, you know, we, he's made a big song and dance of wanting to move to, 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 to Roma, the city, the lifestyle, you know, what he could give his family, the footballing experience, playing under Jose, all of these things. I don't doubt because he had a move to her for Berlin when everybody hated him, connected to this club and only Arteta loved him. He stayed, he remained professional. So I don't doubt that. My problem is you're keeping a player that doesn't want to be here. And as I've seen with the Bellerins, the Lenos, the Jackers, these lot, it's like being at a job and you don't don't mind your job, but you know it's a grind, innit? And these lot are allowed to look at it like that, you know? 
But every now and again, you're looking on Indeed. You're applying for jobs when no one's looking over your shoulder. You've got one eye, one eye and ear open to what's going on. This is what I get with them. And I can't begrudge them. The age is there at, you know, I can't begrudge Leno Bellerin, Jacker for wanting to leave. I've got nothing with them. It just seems a bit volatile. Every good game, man want to stay. They want to leave. You know, the way Leno talks in, press, in, in the press and elsewhere all the time, you can tell he's questioning a lot. And whenever it's so volatile, there's an issue there. And I don't want somebody like that as much as I don't begrudge them, vital to the team. And I just think with Xhaka, it's a chance for Arteta and Arsenal to play safe. You know, I like Xhaka. The problem we have at Arsenal is the lesser of two evils. Xhaka isn't as good as his fanboys make out. He's definitely not as terrible as people make out. Let's not kid ourselves. While I don't think he's amazing, there are aspects that you see missing if Xhaka's not there. He's brave. He can pass the ball. You know, the, the topic on passing the ball is you've got a man that takes a thousand years or is going to prone susceptible to lapses in concentration versus people who are not good enough will play safe it get it, two cocktails you don't want it you don't want to consume you know and and that's the thing i think arsenal would play safe with jacka there's a chance to rather than be brave and say all right cool jacka you're staying but you're a squad player now if you want to leave in january or you want to do whatever you can do whatever but right now we're going with this partnership did you know if you earn your spot you earn your spot but this is it i just think we'll play it safe we'll give it to jacka and we won't look to really in you know enhance our midfield and and, and get some long-term proper options there we'll still be talking about you know when Xhaka plays well all right cool him and party work when it doesn't we need a partner and things like that and I just feel that's what we need to do and I, I can't lie <clears throat> I've got no sympathy for Arsenal with the midfield because we've got a technical director and an owner and a manager sorry who were midfielders on top of everything you know get it fixed simple as that fix it and I, so so yeah man I, I don't mind Xhaka staying I won't be up in arms and that'll be disappointing because it's a want away player that is remaining at the football club but it is what it is I'd be you know I'd be more upset if we don't look to to, to pattern it man Nine hundred and twenty live views is the norm now, DG. Let's play my. I'm gonna play my position. Keep it humble. I, you know when I, I can't lie. When I see more than a hundred people, things is locked in. When I see more than fifty, I'm cool, boy. So I'm gonna just keep it humble. But who knows, man? We're at five hundred and ten likes. Can we keep going, people? We must can scheme on six hundred now. You know what? I said I was gonna spin the goal. Let's spin it, man. I keep saying that we've got to five hundred. Why not? It's only right. <laughs> Yeah, I guess this right, back, Charlie. Bang. Safe, man. Safe, man. Safe, man. Safe, safe. safe. No sucking that, man. Let's go. Please stop spamming. Things are not going to get read. Appreciate the live, the super chat. Sorry. Last time I watched this, you had like 200 viewers. Now you're almost like 1K. Keep it up, bro. Would love to see you on AFT, AFTV too. You've got to ask Robbie, man. You've got to ask Robbie. Robbie's a money man. So it might not make sense for me to be there still. But yeah, man, shout out to everyone. I love for that. And, and this is uh, big up to you, but that's an example of nobody likes to be at a rave first. You see how you said there was 200 views? You probably thought, nah, this is dead and that. Now you're true. Now you're coming true. I'm going to start having dreams about that goal. <laughs> I really need to calm it down and things. No worries, man. Not one of our midfielders did that last season, bro. Arsenal need to do a lot better, Jamaican Gunner. Big up to you, man. Callum Chambers, for me, can be part of the squad, could start off being de uh, deputy fullback and things like that. Being real with myself, I want a right back. I've said it before. Big up the Americans, them as well. Broads and brodesses, dudes and dudesses, what are your thoughts on Onomar, Josh De Silva or one last Ceballos run? Onomar, nope. Josh De Silva, keen to see what you do in the, in the Premier League next year. Ceballos, leave it. You know, you go and do your thing. I want Maitland now to stay on fight too, but there's too much storyline stuff at Arsenal now, man. And we need to be cruel to be kind to ourselves, bro. Man, need to start getting clipped. You look through the whole 25 man list. There's someone that's got love dramas, you know, fan, some Buki fan favorites, people that want to, you know, play in either raw positions. We need to just find some clarity now, man. Everyone from YouTube, come over to Twitch after the stream and hit the follow button. Let's get DG to 1K. I appreciate that. I've dropped the Twitch link. Please make sure you're following the thing on Twitch as well, folks. 
four more likes till we get 500 i think we're there so i'm seeing this late hit the like button you're right we don't want people who want to be here don't want to be here no i don't think i'm ready to be head head scout but it'd be cool man funny because you've got twice the talent as everyone on AFTV. listen man i'm not watching no one and what anyone else is doing but you know if any if platforms were about speaking about football and less about gimmicks or individuals that have gimmicks then not just me but a lot of people you know man don't really see graham at the full front of AFTV and things like that the clowns or people not, not everyone's a clown but people who act funny and do funny stuff and like you're gonna see when when the fans are allowed back at the emirates they're the ones that drive the engagement so they're the money makers so fair play that's the model that's the industry we're in man that's the industry we're in man i don't think aftv is for the middle-aged crowd really it's for everyone really <laughs> brown envelopes and a half Odegaard's it's ceiling for, to me is higher than Madison's, but right now they're at a similar level. Think people are blowing the levels out of proportion, hundred percent, and that's something I've been trying to say all live stream. Personally, Odegaard similar to David Silva back in the day. James Madison, a true baller as well, but we need one at the moment. And trust me, I'll take Ivar as long as we improve as a team. Facts. Facts, facts, facts. Odegaard with athletic midfielders could work. Otherwise, his athleticism is a liability. I do think he can pick a pass. To be fair, he might not be the biggest and most composing of, of midfielders or most dominant in terms of physic physicality. But I can't lie. One thing you can't question with Odegaard for me is his work rate. He puts himself around. He defends well. You know, he puts in his shift. He's on it. He might be a bit feeble and, uh, and need to have some hard food, but he shifts it, man. In my opinion. But yeah, man, it is what it is. Let me see if, you know, we've been focused so much on that. We actually haven't spoken about any of the other things I'm here trying to speak about, people. Please make sure you've hit that like button and you subscribe. And you've set your Twitch reminders on as well, people, because Twitch don't let you down, unlike YouTube. Um, so yeah, man, let's get into this. Let's get into this Lacazette stuff. Lacazette's been linked with Atletico Madrid once again. I know, people, it comes out Benzema linked to Man United uh, back in the days when he was at Lyon. He's always linked with them. Um, so for what it's worth, let's 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 look at this, folks, man. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I don't believe it. But let's see what's happening. Atletico set their sights yet again on Arsenal forward Lacazette as Diego Simeone looks to add more competition in attack to boost bid to defend La Liga title. To be fair, at 30 years of age, 15 million, they might take it. And to be fair with you, good team for him. You know, he presses, he, he does a lot defensively. It'll be a good team for you to be part of and you'd be joining the defending champions. And who knows if you win it again, but it is what it is. Atletico are set to enter the race to sign Lacazette from Arsenal. As you know, Luis Suarez fired Diego Simeone's side to their first La Liga title in seven in seven years. I'm scrolling down trying to find the relevant parts, people. Um, their next highest goal scorer was Marcos Llorente with 12 strikes, people. And obviously, Yao Felix and Angel Carrera didn't do much. You know, Musa Dembele flopped there on loan, and I don't think they're going to go for him again. You know, I'm not too sure Lacazette's a goal scorer like that, but his return is probably better than what you've seen there. Um, Simeone has been a long-term admirer of Lacazette and tried to sign him in the summer of 2017, even agreeing a fee with his then club, Leon. But the move was torpedoed by FIFA slapping Atletico with a transfer ban for illegally signing minors from outside Europe. As you lot know, instead, Lacazette signed for Arsenal for 46 slash 52 million. So that's what it's saying in relation to Lacazette. I don't know what to buy him in relation to that, people. Um Terrera has spoken as well. I'm going to show you like the Terrera stuff. Let's get rid of that. I can't lie. I haven't got much time for it. You know, it just seems like there's a lot of talking in relation to Terrera. Let's sort of move out. But I was in a very bad mood. Lucas Terrera opens up on Arsenal struggles. Lucas Terrera has revealed he struggled so much during his second season at the club that he sought the help of a psychologist. And obviously, mental health is real. You know, I don't know if he was struggling off the field, if he was struggling on it, if he was overwhelmed. But I hope he's able to get through it, a lot of that, people. And it must have been tough. He went from being a messiah from the minute Torreira walks, there was hella chance. You know, we we're saying we finally got a quality player to the next season and what followed. Few could have seen what's happened, what would happen in relation to Torreira. And it's a long summer. We're not in August yet. Moves will be done. But 
with Torreira, it seems like there was a lot of noise. His agent made a lot of noise. His dad made a lot of noise. He made a lot of noise. We heard teams from South America, in Italy, you know, France were all interested in him. And, you know, it doesn't seem like he's got a move. It seems Xhaka is close to Roma, allegedly. Guendouzi's gone. I can't see much with Torreira. And I really thought Torreira would enhance his reputation or better yet, remind people how good he is at Atletico. I think the team would set up for him. Now, there has to be a reason why Arteta didn't want to play you, why Emre tried to rub you out, and why for a defensive midfielder or a combative ball-winning midfielder in a Diego Simeone side, surrounded by South Americans, you know, life of way of life more aligned to him in South America or Italy. So, you know, in terms of um, in terms of style, it was all set up for him at Atletico, and I thought he would be one that would show people, but it didn't work. So there's got to be a reason why something he needs to answer. It's unfortunate, man, that he's gone through what he's gone through from a mental point of view and a way, you know, excluding what happened with his mum and things I do think we may might need to look at, at the mentality of certain players because he does look like a bit of a I don't like to say the word soft but soft but the midfielder says the scars of his te- of his time at Arsenal are still present and that he had to seek help to mentally recover from his second season at the Emirates as well as the dead of his, death of his mother in 2020 from November, from COVID-19 now sympathies with with what's happened to his mother of course that's messed up a year ago I'd been working with a psychologist in Spain because in the second year at Arsenal I played very little it was hard for me to assimilate it because my life depends on football and when I don't play I have a very bad time true I'm in a very bad mood and I know things happen many things happen that's why I started with him and he was giving me a hand with that topic uh, um, out there many years ago they told you but how are you going to go to a psychologist psychologist are you crazy and today it's very important especially for us who live a lot of situations being away from family and when my, my mother's thing happened, I wanted to stop playing football. I wanted to stay in Frey Bentos with my family. I had very little desire to go back to Spain because I had to stay lonely there. And obviously, that, what I'm saying and what everyone's saying, we're isolated to what's happened with his mother. You've got extreme sympathy. For, you know, there's very few things more important than football. Life is. So I can understand it. You know, he feels that he wants to, he wants to be a man and help and be of refuge. He's also hurt as well. And, you know, you never want anyone to feel like they're alone. And I'd say big up Torreira for being, you know, I know there's a lot being done in relation to male mental health and things, but, you know, there's still a lot of taboo. So shout out to Torreira for first and foremost, being man enough to, to go and get help and stuff. I really rate that sort of stuff, really, you know. It's unfortunate what happened to his mother. Luckily, one of my brothers left with me, but I wanted to be here with my father because he was the one who was suffering the most and the one who was hurt the most by the whole situation. Obviously, he's lost the love of his life and his wife, I don't know, for many years. He was always with my mother. They went everywhere together. And today, seeing him alone is a very hard blow that will be difficult to assimilate and we try to be with him to help him accompany him and also hold him so that he does not fall because now we have to continue for us for him and because the most important reason to continue living is always going to be our mother fact she wouldn't want you to stop playing football and them things there she probably tell you to get onto it but from a foot sporting point of view the quicker Torreira has gone the better because I am tired of seeing his name in articles and things like that so that's Lucas Torreira that's Pardon me. I mean, we don't need to speak on Sol Campbell. Um, apparently, Arsenal have been linked with Zhao. I can't say his name. You know, Arsenal line up defender for teen from um, Portuguese side with 18 year old available for 1 million. I'm sure he's played at, at, a, Euro, at a Euros before and under 18, and well, not under 18, I'm not sure the age, but I'm sure he's played at a youth, a youth tournament if I can remember, and he's quite good with 1v1 and quite rapid, but I don't know anything else past that. The 18-year-old is allegedly available for around 100 million and is seen as a long-term prospect by the Gunners. I mean, you sign an 18-year-old for a million pounds, whether he makes it here or not, he can go and develop. And obviously, he was the youngest player to ever play in the Premier League at 16 years of age in 122 days. So again, you can't write him off, but what's happened from doing that at 16 to being available for a million quid? Is this a contracting or is there anything else? Um, He made his debut in 2019 against Benfica. His career is stalled. He's made five further appearances, three from the bench. I told you he's played for Portugal's under-19s. Um, you know, he's got a lot of versatility, as you lot can see. Um, Everton, Southampton and Newcastle were interested in signing a then 16-year-old. Juventus were looking at him, but it never it never materialised into anything. So that's that in relation to, in relation to, you know, the young lad. But I'm all open for it, you know. Not everyone needs to make it. If he can come here and make us a, an honest buck, why not really and truly? Um, Torreira. Uh, sorry. Just throwing that there. And obviously, you know, Zachariah. 
Now, I like Zachariah, but um, let me, in fact, before I offer my opinions, Arsenal and Gladbach, five million apart in negotiations to bring midfielder to the Emirates. I mean, last Swiss international we signed from Gladbach, how did that work out? But um, for me, I would say no to, to Zachariah. I like Zachariah, I wanted him, but, you know, I don't think he's developed enough. Like, I think he's really improved in the last 18 months per se, but same way I think he's stagnated. I don't think he's good enough on the ball to... to to play for a team that's trying to be a top, top club. Um, I think with Lukonga, we can keep it moving. You know, if he's available for pennies, why not? But I would probably leave it. I don't think he's progressed to the level I want. And there's a lot of players we're going to have to work with and, and teach from an individual point of view, much less much less the collective. And I think we should just leave Zachariah alone. Arsenal have been told how much they'll have to pay to sign Zachariah from Borussia Mönchengladbach. Arsenal have been given the go-ahead to strike a deal with Zachariah. Now, unfortunately, he's tested positive for COVID. He has not tried to extend his deal and his club are trying to sell him. So we have to take these rumours with a pinch of salt. The reported noted of the Gunners' interest being reported on comments from Gladbach chief Max Elbow, who appears to admit defeat in his efforts to tie Zachariah down to a new contract. With Dennis, we have been trying to extend his contract since November... Sorry, people. Round two of them flies. My window is open. Um, you better fuck off from, from, from my smoothie. Um, Dennis and his management told us pretty clear they would prefer a transfer this summer. So they've got a player. They're trying to get top money for him, people. Um, allegedly, they're holding out for 25.6 million and we're willing to pay 20.5. And I mean, I'd be open to taking him, you know. But there's got to be a reason Bayern Munich, Chelsea, Arsenal have all stayed clear of him after being linked. And I think it's because he's been a bit, he's struggling for consistency. I don't think he plays well enough for the whole 90. I think his passing has improved, but there's a lot more to go to it. But he is a good player and I wouldn't mind him for a cut price fee, but I wouldn't be trying to pay them 25 million, 25.6 million based on what I saw at the Euros, based on how I think he's played this season. Um, based on the fact that he's not got long left on his contract, it doesn't make sense, people. It really does not make any sense. So, We'll have to we'll have to see see what happens in that regard. Also, as well, people, our, our favorite one ear pod Donny, Arsenal assistant Albert Stevenberg. Apparently, he's left his role at Wales. You know, he was on the bench for the Euros. He, he kind of replaced Ryan Giggs in that regard. He has left his role at, in in the Welsh footballing uh, national team to focus wholeheartedly on Arsenal. So good, good, good on good, good on good on him, Arsenal assistant. Parts is what we'll call that. Parts, yeah, we'll leave that that really and truly. Oh, yeah, that's what we had to speak about. Grealish is a dream, but for, for me, Madison over Odegaard, Odegaard is closer to Emil Smith Rowe, but Madison is something different for me. Come on, keep pushing the likes. I didn't rate Odegaard until I saw the second half of the West Ham game. He absolutely bossed it. was elite. Joel Willock should be sold and Nathan should be sold better for dear future. Okay. <laughs> well, right now, I've actually just got a banana pause in there, some strawberries, some berries, some, a cher couple of cherries, mangoes, uh, kiwis, maca powder, honey. I don't think I'm missing anything else out. That's it. That's it. Two very different, per two very different players. But I'd rather. Um, I can't say his name. Glitch. You know the guy that was at the team that Reese Nelson was on loan. I'd rather him, and he had a decent Euros if I can remember. Zachariah, best athlete, meaty footballer. I listen on ability. Terrera can do a job here, but he's 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 not. It's not worked out in it. Like he's not on it. So just keep it moving. Go somewhere else. Because we heard you struggle to adapt to the way of life off the field. You went to Spain. You got bare South American, man. You know, and it didn't work, man. Steve, I said, DG, I just made this 560, 566 like, bro. Why are people underrating Willock? Torreira's not good enough for Arsenal. Disagreed that Torreira's not good enough, but mentally he's not with this. I don't think, I think if anything, people are overrating Joe Willock nowadays, personally, but... Yeah, man, he can do a job. He can have a future here, but not everyone's got to, man. No, he's not a wonder kid no more, man. Man's 23 years of age, bro. In any walk of life, if you're 22, 23, you can't, you're not calling yourself a kid again. He's not a kid anymore. It's now time to start doing things. A man said, and a hint of fly spray. <laughs> 
you gotta get the fly spray in there, man. Odegaard is a quality player. Why are Arsenal fans so ungrateful? We have no European football and are a joke. The fact we have attract we have attracted anyone is remarkable. Food for thought there. Pass on Torreira. We need players that are 100% committed to the club. There are many options out there we can go and get to improve the team. I think with Laconga and Partey, at least El Nene for a year, whether I want it to or not, Torreira's, you know, within his rights to keep it moving, really and truly. People, I'm very appreciative of it. We're at 605 likes. Stop cutting onions, man. Out of Reese, Maitland, Niles and Willock, who has the highest ceiling in your opinion? Well, I would have said it was Nelson. I still think it's Nelson, but um, Willock's doing the business right now, so probably Willock, you know. Maitland now still needs to define himself in midfield. Willock just needs a platform, and I think Nelson just needs some confidence. So I'd say Nelson. I think Joe Willock surprises a few people, so part of me wants to say him. I'll go with what I thought when they were all youth, man, so I'll go with Nelson still, but it's all about realised potential, man. Bear man got potential. It's about realising it, or it's a myth. But Torreira don't want to be here, bro. Torreira don't want to be here. Do you think Unai ruined Torreira? To a degree, because it was bewildering how it became a 10. But then Arteta's came. Think about it logically. If I'm telling you I'm a left back, man are playing me left wing, right wing, and I'm not excelling. But you as a new manager, you come in and you can see that I am a left back. Play me there. So there's got there's got to be a reason why Emre Torreira, I mean, Emre Arteta and Simeone all didn't really fuck with you like that. And Emre based off the last season, there's got to be some smoke with the fire. There's no smoke without fire better yet. There's got to be. Why I think, I don't understand what Emre, my opinion, Emre, you're bugging out. Arteta, I don't know why you're using not using him, you know. I, I back Torreira against Emre more than Arteta as much as and, and, and Arteta more so than what I've said. But then I look at it, I'm like, Simeone, raw. Like, he was talking about playing you with Partey, the system, the culture off the field, the South American man, and you're speaking Spanish. You know, you got a manager who looks like he, you know, if there was ever a manager that Torreira or someone that Torreira's skill set had, he, Simeone, I thought everything was set up. So what, you know, you've won the league title, but why did you go there and you've not played? Why were you being kept out of the team? What were you doing that the others weren't? What were the others doing that you weren't? What did they have over you? You know, because I'm sure opinions are opinions. It can't always been a tactical fit. I know there's rumours that, oh, because we snaked part A, they were always going to do this, but they've paid for Torreira on loan. So they, that's, a, that's a typical case of cutting off your nose to spite your face because they could say, oh, we're decreasing Torreira, but you paid for him. You know, I thought, genuinely thought Torreira was going to do a mad thing. People are going to re be remembered how good of a player he is and what he has. And I still rate him a lot as a footballer. On ability, he stays. I'm Torreira's biggest fan. Go and check all them vids. But he's not with this Arsenal team, you know. The only good performances I've seen from him is speaking online and get, speaking to papers and angling for moves. Man, I don't want to be here. Keep it moving. Unless you're, I don't believe in any, I, I ain't begging no one for nothing, but, you know. I would get someone else to beg the Messi's, the Neymar. These are the only players that, you, well, you don't want to leave your club. Everyone else, bro, you can keep it moving. As great as you are, great players don't come again. So uh, every uh, great players don't come around often. Good players are always there. You know, simple as that for me anyways, but we'll have to see. He did lose his mum to COVID, but way before that, you know, there was a lot of chatting. Please stop spamming. Any spamming, you're gone. Sorry, my guy. Too much spamming. Nah, man. I do think Zachariah over the last 18 months, his passing has improved, but it's still median. It's stagnant. It's not, he's not progressed to the level. We just have to, until something happens, it's a myth. That's it. You just need soldiers, man. G Jimmy, I don't think you're listening because way before the whole mother thing happened, there was a lot of chatting. Please listen. Please stop spamming. You're just going to get blocked. I'm Listen, I have no divine right to answer you specifically. I actually don't think we need Odegaard. Fair play. I'd love for you to back up your reasoning because I think if it's not Odegaard, you need someone else.
we're moving, man. We're making progress still, man. The engagement over the I say last week, I'm still I'm still bugging up buzzing off last week. Um engagement levels are still crazy, man. I appreciate it. We're still moving, man. For me, if if we were playing a game tomorrow, you hear a lot of talk about Cedric is playing well in training and all these sort of things. I stopped listening to people playing well in training when that was all I, I had to say about William. But um for me, it's Callum Chambers, and, and you know, I'd give it Callum Chambers and Maitland. You know, if Maitland wants to do it, you and Callum Chambers fire out. Me personally, I want a next right back, but I'm starting to move to the thinking of we're not going to get a fullback. Buy it, man. What's the point getting him on loan? You might as well buy him, bro. You might as well buy him. Toby, I've already offered my thoughts on, on, on Tammy Abraham to Arsenal. Please go and check out my previous content, please. I, yeah, just go and check it out because I won't be doing you the justice because I can't remember everything I had to say. <laughs> Trust. I'm not too sure on the keeper, if I'm completely honest with you. I'd have to sit down and speak, man, you know. I'd rather Leno stay than some of the options we might have to... I can't lie, I'd rather Leno stay than bring in Onana and, and Neto and these sort of guys. The keepers I want, it's a scouting thing. I don't think they're name brand. The name brand keepers, I don't think we can afford. You know, I wouldn't even mind if it came to it grabbing a Casper Smichael, but you're not leaving Leicester for Arsenal like without a fight. And I don't think Casper is... You know, I like my, I know keepers got to play out from the back, but I just think when Arsenal are looking for these things, we find guys that can play football, but they can't do the rest. Like, big up the Twitch gang, man. We all play well in training, but it's during matches where people get ripped to new one. Trust. Sam Johnson's decent, but um, second choice and them things they could do his thing. I mean, the goals for Arsenal has to be Europe. Like, there's nothing else. Like, Europe and above. So what man have to be doing. Man said, only Madison, buy Madison. Stop spamming, though. Unfortunately, you're gone, man. I see spam. You're gone, brother. It's unfortunate, man, because I see some long-term viewers, but there's rules are rules. Stop fucking spamming, bro. It's not hard, like. It's not hard. Thoughts on Pedri? If you follow my content, I can't stop talking about Pedri. To call him a baller is an, under an understatement. I'd take Johnson over Ramsdale because of the price. Would you choose Lokonga or Willett to take Ceballos minutes? Well, we bought Lokonga. You might as well just play him, in it. Where do you think Arsenal will finish if they get their signings right? You have more of a chance of finishing in the top four slash Europe. Anything else has to be down to Arteta and these players being competent, confident and consistent over a 38-game period. Personally, that's how I feel. You know, signings is just half the job. Nelson needs a loan. Reese, sorry, needs a loan. Pepe and Saka are best players, and Martinelli needs to play when they don't. Nelson needs a loan like Maitland Niles had to see if he can be the dude. I think he just needs confidence, like Chelsea's Hudson Adoy. Just needs a bit of confidence. Gavi's a baller, the 16 year old. Um, I didn't miss anything. You know, if I've missed it, I've missed it, bro. Are you paying me to chat to you? Are you the only one in this live chat? There's 600, 767. I appreciate the enthusiasm, but it's a pet peeve of mine when people act like I'm some dog at their service, bro. Man's not, you think man's just here to answer your question? Didn't miss anything. Like, it's gone. It's in the sea. There's a bag of people asking questions. How can we done the dance of this media mentality in this club? Need some big changes in the house. Trust me. Bro, they, they, what they're doing to Pedri is a madness. Olympics, Euros, mad season at Barca, needs a break, and then he'll be back playing an even more mad around the fixtures. Would you rather... Eddie will never make it. He's made it as a footballer already, man. So, yeah, man, it is what it is. He's the real winner. I reckon Jack is out the door, but he ain't gone yet. Big up, DG. Would you rather sign a striker and sell Laka or sign a right back? Well, right now, we need a right back, in it, Like, it's going to be a hell of an operation selling Lacazette and you're not going to get proper peas. Would you sell Eddie and keep Balogun for backup? Eddie's gone. Like Eddie should be gone. Like he's not. He said, I'm not signing a new deal. You're letting 15 million go out the door, which is needy for Arsenal. Go and get that. Go and get that. I think Zachariah and Partey is too meaty in midfield, man. You're demanding Partey to be the passer. And Zachariah is a bit meaty like, in that regard. 
I listen, I'll take Kalo Navas, but they're them keepers I hate. He's better than what we've been linked with. He's a quality keeper, but I don't really I don't like them keepers. I like my keepers to know they're keepers. I don't really like these eccentric dons. Pedro will go down as one of the best Spanish midfielders ever. Deluded goon of facts. Prig big up US. I don't normally make them statements there, big statements. So when I do, I believe in it. And I do believe that's the destiny for, for Fingy, man. They're demanding little divas on here, pattern up, bro. Trust me. Where does Eddie go from here? Go start your career, I'd say to Eddie. Go somewhere where you can play consistently and show yourself. There's got to be a reason you ain't really had it at Arsenal. You went to Leeds, it didn't happen. Go somewhere you can learn your craft, you know. You're not going to get it here. Because unless you get into the team, go on one of them real purple patches where you can't be dropped, you're not getting minutes here. I'm giving your minutes to Martinelli. I want to see if Balogun's like you or he's better. I want to see what Balogun can do, you know. Go and do that. If push comes to shove, I'm exploring the Pepe through the middle and all of these sort of things, man. Big up you tuning in from Australia, bro. Hope there's a turnaround in the site at our club because waking up for every match at unholy hours for nothing but else is wearing thin. Big up to all the international gooners there, man, because phew, it's a madness for you lot, isn't it? Like, it's you doing you lot dirty, man. Well, he needs to... He needs to just go somewhere, whether that's a lower prem side or the championship or abroad, where you're part of the squad, like you're a proper first team, a rotation option. You're a fringe player at Arsenal. You're only going to be used if worse comes to worse. Saying that, Arteta does like you, but you're not going to get it, man. It's not going to happen. I don't know what Arsenal's transfer budget is, man. When you find out, let me know, though. I don't know why Edu ain't brought no Brazilian kids. Same way, I don't know. I don't know why Arteta ain't brought through some Spanish underrated guys and that. There's got to be an ex-Pedri or someone out there like that. Same way I'm looking at them, I'm like, bro, what's going on with the midfield? Like, you're both midfielders. You're signing duds, excluding Lokonga and Partey, and you're just, there's inconsistencies there. Boy, 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 boy. So he needs to get something respectable, man. I don't get why Arsenal want Neves because we have part of Lokonga as a double pivot. They both do the different different aspects of the game. I'm starting to doubt when they told us to get excited. Some are familiar words when nothing is about to happen. That's why I told you, like, accept it at face value. Whatever happens is a bonus. Just accept at face value. Don't get hung up on words. Promises are a comfort to a fool. Let them show it. Put up or shut up. Don't let them gas you. Do what you need to do and take it from there. I can't lie on that note, though, people. We've all, we've almost been here for two hours. Shout out to you, Kevin. I need to get out of it because I need to go do lunch. I need to go gym as well. And then I need to go and learn how to stream Football Manager because it's proving tr way more trickier than initially hoped. I'm um, trying to get that sorted this week. You know, we've been here for close to two hours. It's been a fantastic watch along. We've spoken about Odegaard. We've spoken about Laka. We've spoken about partnerships in myth. We've spoken about a lot. I'm very appreciative of the support you guys give me. I'm appreciative of all the support you guys give me on YouTube, Spotify, all the socials. You know, check out the DG podcast. You know, it dropped today. I'm, I, I, it's on Spotify. It's on Apple. It's on YouTube. I'm lost for words. It means a lot. Honestly, it means a lot. Please make sure you can continue to subscribe on Twitch. Q&A time for the Twitch gang on Friday. Members, probably Thursday. Keep a mental note of that. And make sure you're, you're, you're checking your, you know, you're checking your, your community tab. It's appreciative to be with you lot, man. It really is, man. No, thank you, Ben, for you lot giving up your time because you lot are at work. You're looking after you. You're shopping. You're jogging. You're doing bare different things, but you're listening to me, whether I'm in your speakers, your headphones, out loud, whatever in it. You know, some of you are probably listening to me, hoping the govs don't come and bang off the cell door. So I appreciate it, in it, people. I really do. You know, and like I said, it's a pleasure to be here day in, day out with you guys because it's always thought provoking. I, you know, I don't like the divas and the spammers like you lot say. But yeah, man, on that note, I'm going to keep it moving. What likes did we end up with, folks? Let me actually assess the situation, you know, so I can say thank you once again. We're at 651 likes. And again, the target was 100. So everyone that hit the like button, I'm wishing you, you know, the best health physically, you know, an abundance of riches financially, you know, and the same for your family. If you didn't hit the like button, then I hope you break your big toe, really, because, you you know, you're just being lazy, aren't you? But, yeah, I appreciate you lot. I'll see you lot next time. Run up the likes, people. Ha, <laughs> ha. A man said, rip up the shoulders. It's leg day still. I'm trying to do a bit of cardio, man. I'm trying to do up this football thing, man.
you're in Sudan, that's deep. Don't worry about that, man. A lot of you have been saying you're in certain countries, members don't run. So can I do the Patron page, Patreon page and all of those things? I'll look into it, man, and I really will. Um, but I appreciate you lot support. And let me leave you with a mad tip. Against this right back, Charlie. Against this right back, Charlie. Oh,